The Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome back everyone. This is indeed the Angry Chicken. Probably going to be a pretty fat show today. Uh, and it's a, a good thing we're all here. We all are here. Hi everyone, I'm Garrett. I'm here as always with Dills and Jocelyn. Welcome back you two. What's up? Ready to talk cards. Yes, so many cards. So... My Hearthstone week was fine. Let's talk cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had some fun and wild this week, but I, there's no time to get into it. As Talia, would, uh, Talia Sim would sell, say, we're not dicking around. Mm. There's no time for that. Uh, PSA, don't forget to log in. Get yourself your free Year of the Mammoth packs. That's that's a thing now. Uh, surprise me. It's in the game. You get free packs. Go get them. All you have to do is log in. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a very thick show. I imagine it's going to go longer than our usual aim of 90 minutes. Um, and really long shows like this happen because of the support of the fine folks over on our Patreon. So if you like our show, if you like us taking extra time to go card by card and talk about them, head on over to patreon.com slash TAC and chip in a dollar or two, whatever works for you. We appreciate it. And uh, some of our newer patrons are Anna S., Daniel J.S. and Alvin A. Thank you very much for your support. But a lot of new cards from Rise of Shadows have been revealed since we last met, folks. So we're going to get it right in and talk about them. <laughs> and if you're listening and you're thinking, well, you started talking 100 cards, but you didn't talk about that 100 card. Or you started talking priest cards, you didn't talk about that one priest card. That's because uh, some cards came out like minutes before the show. And uh, mm. it takes some time to lay these things out visually for our video audience. So we'll get to them in what I'm calling the remains at the end of all this card talk. So uh, I like that. Yeah. First off, we're going to start with a new Druid legendary. It's a two mana, two, three legendary Druid minion named Keeper Staladris. Staladris. I'm unfamiliar with this character. I'm 99% sure this is a new to Hearthstone character. There are named keepers in Warcraft, but the most recent, like biggest one was Keeper Remulos, who was in the Druid class hall in Legion. So I've never heard of this guy, but yeah, that doesn't mean he's funny. not in Warcraft. But yeah, he's not he's not the most familiar, most recent keeper, maybe he but there's sells, definitely a lot of named keepers. And maybe he's like a vendor and sells you some water and bread or something. I don't know. Probably. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Keeper Staladris uh, has this effect. After you cast a choose one spell, add copies of both choices to your hand. This is shaping up to be the expansion of you got stuff in your hand all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's value, 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 right? Um, of uh, Fandral. A little bit yeah but it doesn't make the spell when you cast it do the thing twice it, yeah you choose one and then you just get that version of it into your hand also it yeah. only works with spells not minions so right yeah so yeah so i'm like how many of these spells are there really like there's obviously like wrath power of the wild power of the wild seems like that could be good you get two mana buff your board in your hand if you're playing like a token druid type of thing well, so, it says add copies of both choices to your hand. Yeah, but I mean, then you get... You get so you cast one spell, get two copies, plus the choose one effect on the board, right? You get the choose one effect. Yeah, it's like it's not yeah. like you're playing a two mana two, three, and you're still doing whatever the spell is, and then you're just getting more stuff. Yeah, and then you're it's getting... It's really weird. Like, I'm like, I'm wondering how good is it to get two spells that are no longer the choose one mechanic, but just I now have... A card that I spend the mana buff and, and uh, one or the other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean, I do kind of get to choose one because I get both in my hand. So I get yeah. to choose which one I play. You choose not to play one. Yeah. Then I've got the one that maybe I don't want, right? Like, yeah. I, you know, then my hand has, uh, like, like, okay, if I do it with Wrath, essentially I put in 
like a minion only frost bolt into my hand and also a shiv. Yes. Right? Like that's basically what I did. <laughs> and I wrathed. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I it's that's fine. Kind of key, right? Because, and you get to do the first spells. So, yeah. And you still do the first spell. Yeah. It's just, it's fine, but I just don't know. Like in constructed level, something just being fine usually doesn't make it. Like the reason why Fandra was so good is that literally like the effect that happened on the board was really strong all of a sudden for a cheap amount of mana. And then Fandra was like a must kill target because the mm -hmm. longer it lasted, the more crazy it got. Whereas this one, I'm like, I don't care if you just keep filling your your hand up with kind of mediocre spells that don't really see play anyway. Like, uh, you know. Could you maybe see like a choose one archetype happen over in Wild because they still have Fandral? So you just make a choose one deck? Possibly. Um, right now, though, in Wild, like the power levels and stuff is so insane. Like, yeah. you can't really go, you can't <laughs> really go down a path of life. Right, so. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, is, like, you don't see like, Murlocs or any like any of that like there's no like I do a synergistic thing wild is all about like I do this crazy ass broken thing that generally involves yeah paying less mana for something than you're supposed to I have right? an extremely specific deck unless I'm shaman I'm just trying to burn you out but that's still very specific <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's like, not a lot yeah. of like, oh, I, look at all the synergy I can get with these things. All I mean, this is just. Yeah. I mean, this is added value in a way because your cards in your hand is are, are still worth something, and, and essentially, whatever version of the choose one you prefer to have, you're still getting that as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, just because it's not as good as Fandral does not mean that Siladris is a bad card. I think this is a good card. I mean, first of all, it's just a two mana two three that's fine, and I think this is a solid effect that kind of in the same way of twin spell effectively gives you the same kind of effect four times in your deck instead of two. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Like, it I just, just seems to me like the kind of card that doesn't end up seeing competitive constructed play, even though it is totally fine. Like it ends up being fine, but not, super OP and the super OP stuff is what ends up filtering to the top, right? And Right. We didn't see any new OP. choose one cards alongside this. So, mm -hmm. you know... Yeah, we might see some amazing new choose one cards. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, if, the, if that happens. But it, this does feel like Twin Spell. I think bringing up Twin Spell is really valid here because what Twin Spell is giving you is value, not tempo, right? Like you're paying more for what you're doing than you should. And what, what ends up happening with Keeper Stiladris is the same thing. You end up paying more for what you're doing than you want to. And usually what happens in Hearthstone is the reason why a deck is really good is because you pay less than you should for a thing. Mm -hmm. right? That's why it's like, you know, Fane deathing an egg or something like that. It's like, that's why that's so freaking strong is you shouldn't pay one mana for a 5-5. Five five, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And that's so what tends to be in Hearthstone, like what brings decks to the top. So this looks to me like a very fair card. And mm -hmm. I don't know. The power level is going to go down quite a bit with the loss of all the stuff. So, yeah, but this, this is fine now. yeah, this basically just is your choose one spells become twin spells. <laughs> you know what I was just thinking, though? Hand Druid, is that still a possible thing? Because you're putting two Maybe. cards into your hand. Maybe that's good there, you know. This, the, Yeah, this is certainly a, a very large tool uh, if that mm. is if that's your goal. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I like this card. I just add cards to your hand. I just don't know how much of the hand stuff is rotating out. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't, fine. Think, I don't think any of it is because this yeah, didn't all, all that stuff new. come in with uh, Witchwood, I believe. Yeah, it's all yes. pretty new, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I also just find all of this between this and Twin Spell and this, this, you know, kind of hand retention mechanics that are coming with this. I find them fascinating. But, but even Twin Spell also seems fair because I have to spend that mana cost all over again to do the same thing there is something to be said again for four copies of a card in your hearthstone deck without having to actually take two extra slots out of what you're trying to accomplish uh, we just haven't really seen something like this before um you can maybe look at something like discover as you know a mechanic where okay i put a card in my deck and it gives me another card and that has certainly worked out very well <laughs> over the history of hearthstone uh but Stiladris and Twin Spell are very specific in, in what they're going to be doing and what they're going to be putting in your hand. So uh, it remains to be seen. I'm, I'm talking up under, I chalk this up under very cool, very interested. Not sure if it's going to take the game by storm. So uh, speaking of Twin Spell, Unleash the Beast is next. This is a six mana rare hunter spell with Twin Spell, obviously, because I was segueing into it. And it reads <laughs> Summon a 5 5 Wyvern with Rush. Would you want 
to spend six mana to summon a 5-5 Wyvern with Rush four times. <laughs> or two times for only one card slot in your uh, in your game as a hunter. Not I mean, particularly. Because <laughs> I don't know how good Spell Hunter is going to be. Because they are losing uh, Rock Dalar, right? And Rexar. Are they losing two my side too? Yes. Yeah, probably not good then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like all the payoff cards are going away. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I don't see this as being only a, a spell hunter thing. I mean, I, I look at this and I just think arena. I'm a, I'm definitely going to mm-hmm. like this in arena just because the 5-5 five, five with that, it having rush means I can instantly impact the board, right? Yeah. I feel um, like yeah, we I need, need to, to do a dis- about- Twin spells in arena before just they're just good. I think they're just good in arena, <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, they're you just know. value, more value. Yeah. yeah. Tempo more is super stars. important in arena, but as you kind of get to the late game, like just not running out of cards is pretty sweet. And six mana for a five five is bad, but a five five with rush, that's kind of worth six mana almost. Like well, yeah, it's kind it's of not like, like a huge taken, pain in the ass to put to pay that. So they've taken like rush and twin spell and like those keywords together are kind of worth the mana ish five five is still five five for five is still not great but i yeah I don't but know. a five five with rush for five i think that's a you know i mean yeah, we instantly yeah. get to kill something we have like that card that's a four mana five five the turn it's played with rush and then it goes then it like it's penalties it turns into a two attack minion right yeah. so this doesn't suddenly get demoted after you kill something True. You still leave a five attack minion in play, and that's mm-hmm. that's got to be dealt with, right? So yeah, um, and I also feel like anytime we talk about cards, we should probably just leave with a disclaimer saying any cards that we are not thrilled by, we do ex- we do acknowledge the fact that discover and uh, adding spells or minions to your hand randomly does affect even bad cards because you may have to play with them even in a constructed environment. Um, so that's kind of also where my brain goes with something like this, where it's like, oh man, I'm definitely not going out of my way to build a strategy around Unleash the Beast because it does just seem fair. Um, but you could discover it. I think at the moment, the only standard playable Discover Hunter card that would yield this is Blood Scalp Strategist because everything else is either uh, discovering things in your deck or discovering a secret like Secret Plan. But uh, there could be more things coming down the pipe. I mean, honestly, if you... Like the like I you know I think the thing that's going to keep Hunter where it is now is Master's Call. Master's Call is not rotating, so I think mm-hmm. that mid range Hunter is still the jam. And this is not a mid range Hunter card. This is some sort of a long game value card. Uh, now there are some other Hunter cards we've seen that look like we might be moving towards some long game value controlish type things. And then if you do this and then you Zoljin later, it's like. Here's a bunch of five fives with rush. Uh, that would be a pretty sick turn, you know. I'm glad uh, you so, brought up Zuljin. Yeah, it's another card that's kind of making me it's knock just instantly. Yeah, is write that this an off. archetype? I don't know. If it is, this card probably works in it, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah speaking of Zuljin, <laughs> um, chat room, a couple of different people are asking if you if Zuljin replays a twin spell, do you get another oh. copy in your hand? I, I would, would imagine yes. Yes. I would think okay, you would cast... It would have been hilarious if I said yes and you said no or vice versa. <laughs> no, 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 I would think yes because the first... The, so it would it would cast the version twin that spell. says Twin Spell on it yeah, and it would cast the version that doesn't say Twin Spell on it. Yeah. Because the second one, after you cast the first one, you get a second one that doesn't... It just doesn't say Twin Spell. Yeah, right? so I think it would replay... Like, assuming you've played both copies, I think then you get one back in your hand. Yeah, you get one right? back, exactly. But the first one says Twin Spell, the second one won't. So I think you would get one back when in you hand. when you when cast when spell is part like that keyword is part of the spell. Yeah, it's like an so, effect on yeah. the spell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you cast other card, I'm trying to think of an example. What's another card right now in the game, hunter spell that puts something back in your hand when you play Zuljin? Well, like I mean, it'll cast Master's Calls. It'll cast. Uh, yeah. What okay. you call it? Yeah, like it, and, and it'll it'll draw again, and it'll do all the it'll yeah, do yeah. whatever it does. Because the question is, is does it count you Zuljin the hero casting it, or the card of Zuljin as the battle cry when you play it? But it, yeah, if Master's Call draws again, then but it, it at should. this point, like overload happens to your hero, even if it's something else casting the spell, right? So to yeah, me, it but feels we just, like then we just like go through this conversation where the the closest thing to this would be something like, you know, if Yogg cast Primordial Glyph, right? Like, you get something in your hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Yogg casted it. Yeah. Like, twin spell means put something in your hand. 
Yeah. Right now. Like I, I have had this argument with people all the time where like they say overload is not actually an effect on the card. It's part of the cost. I'm like, no, no, it's an effect on the card. Like I, it looks to me like twin spell is an effect on the card. Like yeah. the cost of it is six. Well, where it gets murky Everything, is the all fact the card that happens when a Zul'jin casts it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter like that you didn't cast it. It's it's only like cast triggers that don't happen, right? Like things that happen when it, you cast it, like uh, minions getting bigger or something like that. Like um, yes. that kind of yes. thing. Like that's the things that don't happen. But the things that are on the card all happen. Correct. In in until yeah, we get it, an email with some weird Although now Chat Room is saying that if Yogg casts an echo card, it doesn't put an echo version in your hand because you didn't cast it. But I think that that's because of the way the echo keyword is worded, because that actually says like if you cast it. Yeah, if you cast it. Yeah. But I think Twin Spell is just add. It doesn't have the if you cast it part. Uh, Leon in the chat room is saying is asking, not stating oh, as a fact. Oh, sorry, I don't sorry. actually remember the echo. Uh, what happens if y'all cast an echo card? I have no clue. <laughs> I actually really now want to go play uh, Yog Hunter. <laughs> a, a, well, not a Yog Hunter, but a Yog Shaman with uh, Unstable Evolution in it and yeah. just see what the hell happens. Well, <laughs> for the sake of time, we will say we will find out soon. Yes, yeah. we'll find out, yeah. very soon. I, but now I've got now I've got my deck for tonight. Oh yeah, <laughs> Yog Kragwa Unstable Evolution Shaman. Let's go. Yep. Uh, Messenger Raven is up next as a 3-mana three 3-2 three common mage beast with a battle cry that reads, Discover a Mage Minion. Okay. I mean, again, value uh, mm -hmm. over tempo. Is value going to be what we need here? You know what, though? Uh, I would instantly look at this in the past, and I would say, Odd Mage. But now, no, we're yeah. not <laughs> talking about that anymore. Hey, Odd Mage I mean, and Wild? You know, odd Mage and Wild probably still just wants to kill you and not uh, val like value draw extra minions, but mm -hmm. um, this does uh, seem like it's. I mean, discover a minion if you have like a late game value type deck and you play like control stuff, which there's still going to be a decent amount of tools for that. Then hell yeah, give me some value. But I look at this and I think arena almost instantly. That's where my brain goes as well. Yeah, uh, just because like I, I don't know, I can't imagine playing a three minute three two that does nothing to the board instantly in standard and feeling pretty good about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be like three minute, three, two. And the other guy's going to be like, I'm starting to kill you now because <laughs> I'm way behind. <laughs> I'm be like, but I got this mage minion. <laughs> yeah. I, again, yeah. though, with the caveat of, well, we are losing a lot of cards. Power level may dip. So a card like this yeah. has the chance to make it into decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. If it, it, I, I look at this though, and I think like if this was like maybe a Talanji deck, which is a priest thing or something like that, it, you know, because you're adding minions that didn't start in your hand, that kind of thing. So, but I don't know if Mage has the payoffs to make this thing actually cool. It, it's it's fine, but I think Arena. I mean, it's a great Arena card. Yeah, yeah, super good Arena card. Yeah. Uh, not leaving Mage just yet. Power of Creation is next. It's an eight mana epic Mage spell that reads: Discover a six cost minion, summon two copies of it. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah, um, there's some pretty sick. I mean, we saw on the stream it was uh, four uh, six mana four fives with divine shield and taunt, and you're like, here's two of them. But then they also made four of them because they played the next card we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Um, which we should probably just bring it up because I think yeah. they're a package. Yeah, we should probably, yeah, I guess talk about them in, in tandem. Cadgar is uh, the other mage card we were going to talk about. It's a two mana, two, two legendary mage minion. Shit Wizard himself is here as a playable <laughs> card, not just as a hero portrait. Uh, and Cadgar's effect is your cards that summon minions summon twice as many. Well, there so you go. Power of Creation has the potential to summon four six cost yep. minions if Cadgar is on the board. It says twice as many. I mean, that's it's not like plus one. It's like no, double this effect, whatever it is. So, so. you can also uh, pair it with uh, what's that thing that does things based on spell power? It's oh, the uh, card, yeah, uh, no one played four mana spell power summon. Yeah, yeah, summon minions with the cost equal to your spell power. Yeah, plus it two summons two drops and, and then they go up and, and they go up with spell power. And that, yeah. That's always been pretty terrible. Unexpected, uh, unexpected results. results. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Wow. Thank you, chat room. <laughs> um, Which that card's always been pretty play. terrible. 
Yeah, which is a cheaper play than, you know, the 10 mana it takes for creation in Cadgar. So there there could be something here that is really interesting. Because again, Cadgar's cheap, so yeah. he doesn't need just, necessarily be late game. Yeah, I, it's just that you'd have to have six mana or five in coin to do unexpected results in Cadgar on the same turn. And Cadgar only having two health, it's very unlikely he's going to survive. So I don't know if summoning four two-cost minions off a of six mana is, is really helping you win a game. I, well, I just look at it and I say, Cadgar is a legendary. I don't know if I'm going to build a deck around Cadgar. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I could see you putting him in and then a power of creation for this, like, one sick play at some point. But the fact is, like, I can only do this thing once in a game. And if my opponent can just deal with it pretty easily, then mm -hmm. I need to have some other way to win, right? So I'm not convinced unless we see, like, the rest of the mage cards that yeah, like I mean, a Cadgar maybe, type summon maybe, a bunch of things. Is yeah, maybe bad. summoning minions is the thing that mage gets to do in this expansion. Sure. Well, yeah, like conjurer type mage. That'd all right, so so Caligos sticks. You're you're late gaming off your Caligos. You pull your messenger raven. You play. You discover Cadgar. Suddenly, <laughs> shit is free, and Cadgar is blowing things up. <laughs> I think Caligos power of creation is more. Yeah. Uh, like, just let's just do that. Like, that's yeah. enough, right? There. Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw four twelve on the board, and then for free, I'm going to throw two six cost minions that I discovered. Caligos just kind of is enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Caligos right? is amazing, like, yeah, right? Just, yeah. It's like a Caligos. high chance you can discover power creation off of Caligos, and that's. By the way, I think about this in Wild, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do this. Like double Sylvanas, double Emperor Thoris on. Oh my god. Yeah. I, That's so good. There, there's just uh, not. I'm assuming there's going to be at least a few other mage cards that summon minions, uh, given that Cadgar is coming, or that maybe more coming down the line. So eventually, that may be an archetype you could pursue. Uh, yeah. But at the moment, I think comparing Caligos to Cadgar is a really good example of that. You know, we always come back to what does this card ask of us, and Caligos asks nothing. Like, sure. hey, do you want <laughs> to do something man. awesome? Is all all Caligos asks you, and Cadgar asks. Well, is there enough of these of these effects in your deck for this to happen regularly, <laughs> and so on? Yeah, you got to so pair forth. it with something, and then have that something somehow get you super ahead. Now, it, it did in the stream, but you know those stream decks well, are yeah, never, but, they're yeah. not tuned to what the meta is going to be, and yeah. th this might just be too damn slow for what other people are doing. So we'll see. But I mean, obviously, the potential is there. It's mm -hmm. super there. I want some of the draw comic now of Caligus just you know knocking on your door. You open the door, and he just goes. You want to do something awesome? <laughs> just, that's that handsome smile of his. And you just go, yes, Caligos, I do. I do want to do something awesome. Here's a spell. It's free. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. Yeah, so I just, you, know what I, you know what I really wonder about this, too, though? Is like, does it have to get paired with Cadgar to be good? Right? Or is it just fine? On its own? Yeah. I think it's probably just fine on its own. Probably fine on its own, right? Yeah. Free for member, granted, free for member again was priest that has a lot more um, survivability than mage does, so that could be why it's off play. Plus, there was all the spiteful decks and stuff that it was seeing play in. But I feel yeah, like it's spiteful anymore, though, huh? So yeah, but yeah, this would be sweet in a spiteful deck. You're in a couple so pyros good. and a couple of these. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You could basically be spiteful mage in wild, yeah. which is these and, and pyros. Um, but I do think that two six cost minions for or two of the same that with the discover effect for eight mana, like if this was any cheaper, it'd be super broken. So I think it's, I think it's good. I think, it, I think it's going to see play at least in this expansion, like sure. while the power level is dropping off when we're losing everything we're losing, this could definitely be a thing. Are we losing dragon collar Alana? She was from Kobolds, wasn't she? Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, she's been yeah. around. Big Actually, spell I forget mage what, what. Yeah, so big spell mage might not really be the thing. Yeah. And I, we're losing Dragon's Fury too, right? So. Yep. Hmm. That's too bad. Because it, like, this is like spiteful and, and big spell totally come to mind with this. But. So Maybe also, I think. And wild and, and sure. halfway decent and standard until something better comes along in three months. <laughs> So, uh, it, it's, I mean, it's worth noting, though, that there will be the mage. So, Discover means that class cards should show up more often. 
So mm-hmm. what is the mage six drops? What, what are they? I don't even know what they are. I don't even know. Yeah, off the top of my head. I, it's like mage. Mage has minions? No, they don't. They don't have minions. <laughs> uh, but I mean, there are things like, okay, damage Stegatron. Oh, they have Arcanosaur and Meteorologist, which are three threes, which would be terrible. Um, but they, there's damage Stegatron, which wouldn't have its battle cry go off. So it'd be like a freaking 512 taunt. Two 512 mm-hmm. taunts. You can get like we saw with the four or five with the vines. Like I think there's good options. The fact that you discover means you should be able to throw out the crappy options and pick something, yeah. right? So yeah, I, even I don't know. if you get Arcanos or Toki or whatever, there's chances that you know there's still two other cards that are going to be offered. What are the chances mm. you're going to get all three? Yeah, all three being <laughs> yeah. awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, Reckless Rocketeer is a six mana card. You could get you could just pyroblast people with for eight mana. <laughs> Unnerf Pyroblast. I get two Reckless Rocketeers and I just hit you in the face with both of them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. This again. Oh, it's it's potential. It makes me wonder is, is Mage getting any six cost minions in this expansion? Well, I, I mean, mean, yeah. The, I, I hope so because the two they have now are terrible. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't get those battle cries. That would stink. But. Yeah, I, Kagar has promise, right? Like, there's a lot of room for them to expand upon this and add cards that work with Kadgar. Um But uh, power creation, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Lightforge Blessing is the next card on our list. It's a two-mana common paladin spell. It also has twit spell, and it wi- uh, reads, it wins, it reads, give a friendly minion lifesteal. This does not win. No? I mean, it could help you win. It could help you yeah, not die. It. <laughs> it could help you not die. Yeah. I mean, if a two mana, like, heal for... Uh, let's imagine realistically, like, how big of a minion you'll be able to put this on, like, often, right? Probably will get, like, a four or five or something like that amount of heal. But then it still has lifesteal, right? Yeah, if it's not it to for it. a it's turn. Not like it goes away, it. like, the, yeah. the, the, the poison or whatever. So, like, leeching poison. I don't know. Maybe that heal paladin tries to make a splash. Um, I mean, that like gives, this gives a Joss lot of gas the first too. Day, right of the new expansion with Ross the Con's Rebel. That was like one of the first decks he did. It was the like oh, yeah, the, the paladin thing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the heal tiger paladin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's another tool in the toolbox. Maybe that's enough. I mean, I it gives know. a lot of gas to that archetype, right? Because of the way Twin Spell works. I'm um, just giving you all this potential heal, but. Mm-hmm. Plus, we also have um, the uh, immortal prelate guy from Rosticon who's oh, going to be yeah. around. Mm-hmm. And I think we, oh, uh, do we lose Lunessa, don't we? Uh, yeah, and we also lose the quest, which is yeah. another thing where you look at and they're like summoning Galvadon. But, yep. you know, it's like I, I look at this and <laughs> well, I go, like, nobody <laughs> ever did. At least people tried to make OTK Pally work and it was, you know, viable <laughs> for a little while. Galvadon was just a big nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's actually interesting. Uh, Hachikuma brings up Pyromancer because if you put mm. Life Steal on Pyromancer, then all the damage it dealt would heal you. So, yeah. I mean, there's definitely this stuff here. Eat your heart out, priest. Know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not convinced. This seems like this seems like a big maybe to me. Well, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> this is not right. historically the type of card I get excited about because it doesn't. Yeah. really help you win it just, I've, I've never been particularly excited about healing in the first place but healing has worked out in hearthstone you just need the archetype to make it shine i mean well, if we thing, can... right? this isn't part of a win condition this is uh a... well it could be hold off yeah this is a hold off until you get to like the right. holy wrath shirvala paladin might want to just be like hey i just need to not die for a while exactly yeah so then like yeah. your win condition is holy wrath and shirvala yeah. and then this is how you get there so I mean, I, I think this is great. I think this is going to see play for sure. I just don't know, like, what minion is in that deck that you're putting this on and actually getting, like, a lot of heal from, you know? But if you put two in your deck, that means you can do this four times. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But I'm doing it four <laughs> times to what? That's my issue. Like, what am I putting it on? I'm, like, we're not, we don't have Steed anymore either, right? So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, I need to have, I need, I need to reliably feel like when I do this, I'm going to heal for, like, more than four. 
if I'm paying two for it. <laughs> Leon you know? beat me to it. A, a dude with kings. A dude with kings. I yeah. was thinking the same thing. I mean, yeah, this is Tyrion in that deck. Tyrion's always the, Tyrion's never rotating. There's something to so. be said for <laughs> the reason that we, you know we, we always mention like, oh hey, buff spells are a little scary because it opens you up to two for one, but it's a little less scary with this because it is twin spells. So it's like whatever. I got four of these to burn through. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, again though, just in a vacuum, this is not an exciting card. Uh, but yeah, but like we have two mana heal for draw card, right? I, I'd rather I'd rather just have that, right? If I'm trying to do some OTK Shivala stuff, so I like yeah. Well, this, I, is, though, this is like yeah, two mana and put it on a minion that'll light heal for, and then you draw another light forge blessing. Mm, but I want to draw through my deck <laughs> so that I can then holy wrath you with my Shivalas. <laughs> Are we losing Baleful Bank or two? By the way, is that going away? Uh, Baleful I Banker. So. Yeah, I think we are, Set right? So this from. whole deck doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, crap. Okay, what? And, and we're losing the Death Knight. No, so no, we no. Can't he's Witchwood. That way. He's Witchwood. He's sticking around. Oh, he's Witchwood. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay, then the deck is still. Let's say I'm like he's creepy. He looks like Disney art. Uh, probably which <laughs> yeah. one? I, I mean, he didn't feel like he's been around that long. So. Yeah. It's just it's like right now. It's like there's so many cards rotating. I'm not gonna like know them off the top of my head until yeah. it happens. Yeah. You know? I mean, Pyromancer yeah, was brought like up. Like, there's something to be said for cards, control, right? Give yeah. or take. Yeah, it's a lot of cards. Yeah, there's something to be said for control, but uh, there's more interesting more. cards for us to, to to him and haw over. So I'm I'm just gonna. I need a button. Like, I'm done. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I think uh, I'm kind of just talking in circles now about Lake Forge blessing, but um, there's new hench clans in this set, but don't get too excited. Uh, this new this new card is called Hench Clan Burglar. It's a four mana four three common rogue pirate with a battle cry that reads "Discover a spell from another class." Hench Clan yeah. Thug is feeling very confident in its uh, place in the Hench Clan quality hierarchy. I love this card. I know you do. <laughs> I'm so like okay. I love what Peter said on the stream, which was going forward. I was like, I literally was talking about this on my on my stream the other day because I went and played it wild, like my all gold wild and burgly rogue, and I immediately queue into a rogue, and I'm like, well, my deck doesn't work. That sucks. <laughs> and he's like, going forward, we're gonna make these like burgle rogue cards work in this fashion. Like they're not retroactively going back and changing the way the old ones work, but the burgle theme is not going away. But now, rather than just from your opponent's class, just from another class, right? Yeah. So it allows you to still get that whole test gray main cool thing going where you're playing all these spells from other classes or like the weapon that heals you, which now is like the new, you know, put life steal on a, on a King's Bane thing. Like we're just going to make that thing gigantic. Uh, it allows you to still do that. Even if you queue into the mirror. Right. So, and then the mirror is actually interesting again, instead of like a non game because your deck just didn't work. So yeah. hell yeah. It's, it's, it's kind great. of funny because I, I do think that this is probably a good change. I just, um, I wish there was some way for them to almost like assign you another class at the beginning of the game or something, because when you were always stealing things from your opponent's class, then it was always the same class that you're getting cards for. So there's potential for like synergies there and stuff. If every time you discover it's from just another class, then you could get like a warrior thing that does things with shields, but then no way to ever get armor. And yeah. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I play a lot of this deck. I personally like this better because there yeah. are certain classes where I just can't get synergy at all from them. And I'm just, you know, it's uh, it's like, let's say I get, you know, a shaman or something like that. And I'm just getting a bunch of like totemy things. And I'm just like, this sucks. Like, I'd much rather have the option to be like, I would prefer this druid thing over yeah. this stupid shaman thing. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I do cool. see what you're saying where like you can't get multiple cards from the same class reliably. Yeah, I feel like that's actually been a hindrance in in enough situations where the benefits were not. It wasn't like it was super six all the time. Mm -hmm. There were certain times, like against Druid, it was dope because if you play like academic espionage, you get like one mana ultimate infestations and stuff like that, right? And so there are certain classes where it's like they they have expensive cards. When I make them all one mana, they're really freaking good. But uh, the uh, the other stuff is staying the same. If we just have enough of these, it would make it so that it's a, not a non game when I play. Yeah. 
Amir, and I'm I'm I think that's enough. So me. so Jocelyn, what you want is uh, Arena Rogue. You want some Baku or Genas card that at the beginning of the game uh, on your Rogue it, it discovers three classes. You select one, and all your future other class spells are drawn from that class. Pull from that, yeah, that would be cool because that's a uh, chat room is also saying something along those lines too. Is like giving a Burgle card that says like discover a class to Burgle from, and that would be really cool. I <laughs> Burgle just being a keyword would be super neat, mm. <laughs> but. Well, I, my suggestion that I made on stream when I was talking about it, because, you know, it was just, I was just super frustrated to queue into a rogue, and I'm like, I'm going to play this fun deck. And I'm like, oh, well, now it's not fun. <laughs> now I can't do anything. But my suggestion was just, if you play against a rogue, just have it be a random other class. Yeah, spell, random other class, I mean? yeah. And just, like, that would at least be fine for me. Like, that would at least make things interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And that well, kind of what I mean key. by, like, some sort of, like, background, like, if this condition doesn't work because you queue into the mirror, yeah. then get mage whatever yeah, pretend you're exactly. playing a mage <laughs> yeah but but even if it was just random every time from just all sorts of different classes i wouldn't mind it's just the thing that you just can't do anything because they're all rogue cards like it's just yeah. so stupid yeah it sucks to have a mechanic in a game where based on the matchup suddenly like that mechanic just doesn't actually do anything anymore so yeah so this is this is a positive change i like it yeah well, uh, the uh, unidentified items are returning in this expansion, and they're also returning to Rogue uh, in the form of a six-mana epic Rogue spell called Unidentified Contract, uh, which reads, destroy a minion, gain a bonus effect in your hand. And the bonus effects are, one is called Betrayal, which deals uh, targets damage to adjacent minions. Then the rest I looked up on Reddit and no one could agree on if it was called Seance or Recruitment for this next one, which is add a copy of the minion you kill to your hand. I think Peter said Recruitment. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the other two effects just have unknown names, at least at the time that I looked up this information. The third effect uh, adds two coins to your hand, and the fourth effect summons a 1-1 one -one Poisonous Stealth Silent Assassin. Okay. I mean, it seems like it's... Eh. <laughs> I, I look at it and I immediately think arena again here because uh, six man to kill a thing like walk the plank is not going away. We're losing vile spine. We are losing vile spine. Yeah. But That's at the same time, time body on board. yeah, you kind of, you probably paid six or more cause you had to do a thing before you vile spine, but mm. then you yeah. got the, the vile spine on board. Right. Yeah. So, but, but the, I, I mean, they, look, if they, they realized just, like vile spine was too good. So this if is, they need to kill stuff, if rogues part. need to kill stuff, this is a way to kill stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm a little more soft on this than I guess you two are. I like this card. Um, I, I I'm not, I don't want to discount anything you just said cause you're, you're 100% right. Um, I guess I would just put, like to put a little bit more emphasis on the fact that they are losing, uh, vile spine, which is, has been a key mm -hmm. removal tool for them for so long. Um, and also, all of these effects are pretty decent. Eh, I mean, they have the same kind of problem that all the unidentified things have, right? Is that, like, one seems pretty good. Like, I would say Betrayal seems awesome, assuming that your opponent has any kind of board at all, right? Because you're either killing or softening up three things. Yes. Which seems really good. Yes, thank but you then, for, like, for saying I'm right, Jocelyn. I appreciate it. But well, then, yeah, I mean, if you can <laughs> kill three big things, holy crap, that's insane. But there's going to be a lot of matchups where that's a dead effect, too. Well, it doesn't, you, like, know. I don't even think it has to be big things. But assuming that you're going to kill a big thing, then it's probably got big attack that's probably going to kill whatever medium, even small things are next to it, right? So mm -hmm. just taking three things off the board, potentially, is good. But then, like, two coins to my hand? That's not as exciting. I don't think summoning a 1-1 one, one poisonous assassin is that exciting, either. But you're, in but you're, comparison. you're Jocelyn. You're the person who, anytime coin is mentioned in Rogue, you're like, oh, it's good, it's good, it's just good because it's coins or it's low cost yeah, I mean, minions and coins, it's combo enablers. Obviously, that always happens in Rogue, but still, like, I think there's some underwhelming variants of it, and so because there are underwhelming variants, I don't think that it's going to see as much play as like Valspine did, obviously. Yeah, like I look at the like the recruitment version, and I go. You know, Entomb worked because it didn't do the death rattle effect and stuff like that, mm. right? Like there's, there was like reasons why that was really good. And this kind of feels like a little bit in that vein. I, yeah. I do think that two coins is pretty sweet because it allows you to like tempo. It essentially means that you walk the plank this spell because you got two mana mm. back on it, right? 
and then you didn't have to kill an undamaged minion. So, I mean, like, I look at this, I'm like, it, it just depends on what kind of rogue sees play, and if it's a rogue that needs to kill stuff for six, like, if six mana is not too much. Because I, I imagine rogue moving back more to, like, the tempo thing, but we have seen some value-oriented cards so far. Um, like, we're, we're seeing so far for rogue a lot of, like, the lackey stuff, which means maybe I'm just trying to, like, take you to a late-game thing and then do lackey things and then have some kind of big finish. And if that's the case, then hell yeah, I probably need a lot of removal and I don't mind paying six mana for it. Um, it's just, do I want to pay six mana for removal or am I the proactive guy? You know, which Rogue has historically been, right? Like, mm -hmm. they were the one generating the tempo, not the one... Like, you see, Walk the Plank doesn't even really see play right now because Vile Spine is the tempo version of Kill a Minion, right? It's yeah. the Kill a Minion, put a Minion in play. And well, Walk the Plank is like, no, no, I'm just reacting and Rogue is more of a proactive deck and always kind of has been. So at least like the good versions of Rogue. <laughs> the uh, the fun versions of Rogue, though, like in a Burgle Rogue, hell yeah, I want to play this card because like I have a chance to Burgle something from you. If I can copy that minion that I killed, well, that counts as Burgling to me. So, I, you know, it's like it's just to me, this is a card that like really depends on where Rogue lands because mm -hmm. it would be super good in a late game control variant. Yeah. But it'd be bad in like a tempo aggressive variant yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah yeah i mean you bring up a good point i mean i just like the card i think it's cool i think that the bonus effects are a little bit better than i've seen a lot of people giving them credit for uh, mm -hmm. but you're right historically rogue hasn't played this slow but i mean we saw like so far king togwaggle or whatever what's the togwaggle guy called well uh well we're Ice about baron togwaggle yeah we're let's let's just go ahead and talk oh, about we haven't it. even talked about him yet yeah. have we no. yeah he's next <laughs> oh. so All high baron right. togwaggle is a six mana five five legendary rogue minion uh also, just the grossest art, I think, in the history of Hearthstone. He just looks disgusting. Like, fat bastard Austin Powers level of gross. Uh, yeah. That's a good comparison. <laughs> He's the Jabba the Togwaggle. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or I guess that what, whatever the Goblin King in those forgettable frickin' Hobbit movies it looks kind of like him, too. <laughs> do you, anyway, uh, Togwaggle... Do, do you ever have, like, a gym membership and, like, you'd be in the bathroom and there'd always be, like, a guy who looks just like this, like, wandering around <laughs> in just a towel? <laughs> like, oh, man, you got the towel. You're lucky. <laughs> You're a lucky well, it's, man. it's just, I just say because it, it looks like has kind of what he's doing, right? Like he's just got the towel draped just under that giant slabby. <laughs> yeah, it post. definitely looks like he's just holding a piece of fabric there. Like, yeah. But you're getting, he's you're just wandering around the sauna, like talking to you way too close. You're like, hey, <laughs> back off just a little bit. Give me some personal space. <laughs> Good God. He accidentally drops the towel every now and then. It's embarrassing for everybody. Accidentally. Puts a leg he, he definitely has a lot of back hair, right? This guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, sorry. Six mana, five, five legendary rogue minion with a battle cry that reads, if you control a lackey, choose a fantastic treasure. And these are the same fantastic treasures that you can obtain from Marin the Fox. They're pretty you fantastic. Choose from four of them, right? And isn't it like yeah. the same four every time? Is that is that is correct? It? Is it? I thought it was like the same same four every time. Like you're always going to get these exact four. I don't remember. I don't know exactly how many case. treasures there are. Yeah, there are all four of Marin's treasures. Yeah. So there's only four treasures you can get, and you literally select which one you want. Okay, your so question yeah, so made me the, doubt myself. I was like, I thought there were only four treasures, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's the golden, golden kobold, the goblet, somebody's goblet, wondrous wand, and the crown mm -hmm. are the four options. So, oh, you've got them! Yay, Garrett! <laughs> yes, I was hey. a little, little slow on the draw there, but yes, yeah, you got your kobold, your crown, your wand, your goblet. Um, I mean, one just seems like the one I would go for most often. Almost every time, right? Yeah, yeah. like High Spear and Talk Michael Battle Cry, cast Wondrous Wand or, or get Wondrous Wand. I guess you have to pay the mana for it, but yeah, but so um, there might be a situation though, like if you generate a crap ton of lackeys, right? Which it kind of seems like you're going to do with this deck. That the monkey might be pretty sweet, you know, because uh, yeah, like, you've got a handful of one ones. Late yeah, game, you get a bunch of lackeys. Like, yeah, just boom. Now they're a bunch of legendaries. Yep. Yeah, it's a kobold and a monkey. Three and a six six at the same time. <laughs> Push my glasses. Definitely up. a consideration, I think. Yeah. No, it's a good point. I mean, this is he is based around lackeys. Um, I mean, I 
just like the card, you know, even if I am favoring Wand uh, with the potential of lackeys being a being a thing. I mean, discovering a legendary isn't, isn't terrible either. It kind of depends on where you're at in the game, right? You may not want to draw three cards, but I find that unlikely. Yeah, if it's like towards the tail end of the game, drawing three cards might be bad. Also, hand size issues could come into play sometimes. But uh, yeah, it seems like wand would be most of the time what I'm going to want. And then situationally, I've got the option to do this other stuff. It just seems like this card is sweet. I don't know if it's actually super powerful, as powerful as it seems, but it's sweet. Like, it's just awesome. I think uh, it probably depends on how many ways Rogue has to generate lackeys, right? And if you don't fall way behind generating yeah. lackeys, yeah. yeah, like that. That's if you're if you're talking about like I think if you're playing this deck that's generating a bunch of lackeys, hell yeah, you're probably playing unidentified contract, and hell yeah, you're probably playing walk the plank. You're playing all this like ways to control the board. You're vanishing things and all kinds of stuff. And then at some point, you try to like do some OTK combo with wanding out a bunch of zero cost spells or something like that. So I don't. Mm -hmm. Seems like there's a lot of fun things that can happen here. Also, uh, people talk about the scheme in the chat. You could like shuffle six of these into your deck, you know, for one mana. Oh man! <laughs> and then you just played tons and tons of tog waggles for the rest. I, of the I game. mean, yeah. At that point, I'm I'm just I'm just taking the crown and just like whatever. Oh, I'm gonna find some yeah. good legend. I mean, that'd be fun. That'd be real fun. That'd just be... the clown fiesta game right there. Yeah. For sure. yeah. That'd be yeah. a fun thing to like mirror match that against your buddies. So you are just getting all the treasures and just going nuts. But um, I mean, I do think it's good if any class I think is like probably runs the least risk of falling behind generating lackeys is probably rogue just because of their historic tempo and they, they still have ways to cheat mana. And I mean, yeah. hell, you can, things. yeah, I mean, you can play mm -hmm. <laughs> on six and prep into one of these treasures. So, well, if you have a lackey on board. Well, that's yes. the thing. I, f I feel like Togwaggle most oftentimes will be played on well, seven. Dills, you're yeah. forgetting that the previous turn you unidentified contracted and put two coins in your hand. So, uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yep. But that was on turn <laughs> six then. Or you say I prepped that on turn three. <laughs> you prepped then... that on turn three. And then on turn yeah. uh, four, you high yeah. and Togwaggle. Then with your second point. prep, prepped out your Wondrous Wand. Yeah. And it's just a perfect storm of complete insanity like... that probably will never happen. It's going to happen all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be standard <laughs> gameplay in the high and Togwaggle yeah. deck. Yeah, it's 23% it's, uh, of the time it works every time. <laughs> yep. So... Uh, we have many more cards to talk about, but let's take our first break of the show and thank our sponsor today, HelloFresh. And if you're unfamiliar with HelloFresh, they are a milk kit delivery service that chops, plans, and delivers step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. Uh, I really can't say enough how much I enjoy HelloFresh. Uh, it doesn't get boring because you get like seasonal, simple recipes and pre-measured ingredients. It shows up right on your door in insulated packaging that holds up to the florida climate i am in a swamp folks you're fine you can let it sit on the doorstep for the day you know uh and you yeah don't do it for like a week yeah, not like <laughs> <laughs> ice does eventually melt <laughs> uh it, also you can customize what they deliver because there are three plans to choose from classic veggie and family uh with the option to switch between them when your when your tastes change and there's great menu features as well. There's uh, HelloFresh's dinner to lunch. You, you make a dinner and you have a lunch at the end of it. There's 20-minute meals. There's one-pot wonders and uh, quite a few others. And on top of all this, all the meals come together in 30 minutes max. Uh, they call for less than two pots and pans and require minimal cleanup, which uh, was definitely the number one selling point for me. And I can attest. Yeah, dude, I have a tiny little kitchen, so making things in one pot is definitely the jam. And I love one-pot things. Yeah, so it really sucks when I have like all of my burners going and I'm trying to do one thing and one thing. It's like every time they send me stuff, I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, it all just goes in here. And then out comes <laughs> I make it hot. Beautiful thing. Yeah. And I, and I didn't have to. My kitchen is literally super tiny. And I like putting a microwave on my counter 
it was like a problem. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've lost half my kitchen. I mean, when we when we got our home, I was really excited to finally have a decent sized kitchen, and then sure. I quickly realized I couldn't stand it when I used like more than two pots or pans, and I was just mm-hmm. like, oh my god, I'm spending more time cleaning up than I am cooking. So, uh, you know, I have a little more space now, and I still am stoked as all co- as can be that I don't need to use every tool in my kitchen to make these meals. So I very yeah. much appreciate it. Um, but a, a big fan. I mean, it's just got tasty food. And also the the thing I've noticed myself recently is I've been dipping into vegetarian meals just because they're Whoa, good. Oh, dude. Like, What's going on? I am Their like vegetarian a- offerings as someone who really likes meat are really good and filling. Yeah. That's always been my problem with mm-hmm. vegetarian stuff is like I just don't feel full at the end. So yeah. if you're saying that that works that way, I'm willing to give that a shot. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a lifelong carnivore, and I I'm not switching anytime soon. Don't don't worry, folks. We're like, no, Garrett, you're an artist <laughs> who's not a vegan. <laughs> Stay strong. Uh, but it's it's just good, man. It's, it's, it's asparagus risotto, I think, is is on the menu like this week, uh, and I've had it before. Really like it. Big fan. There's no meat in it. It's very tasty. So go check them out, and you can get eighty dollars off your first month of HelloFresh when you go to hellofresh.com/tac80 and enter the code. TAC80. That's it's it's twenty dollars off your first four boxes. So head on over to HelloFresh.com slash TAC80 and enter the code TAC80. Let them know we sent you. We thank them for the support and we thank you for using that URL and that code. But let's get back to cards because there's even more to talk about. Uh, starting with Rafam's scheme. So we saw Rafam last week. Now we're seeing his scheme. Or did we did we see Rafam? We saw Rafam, didn't we? We saw Rafam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, for some reason, I'm like, wait, did we just see Keyard? Did we actually see his card? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the whole replace your hand and deck of legendary minions. We had that long control yes. warrior discussion. So anyway, Rafam's scheme is a three-mana common warlock spell uh, that reads summon one, one, one imp. And like all the schemes, it upgrades each turn that it's in your hand. This increases how many imps are summoned, not their statistics. You don't, you don't, you don't end up with like a summon one, 12, 12 imp if you've just been hoarding this thing. You get, uh, well, a maximum of however many imps you can fit on the board seven <laughs> or well yeah well or if you, you have, have minions on board yeah. Yeah. seems pretty bad i was gonna say i i like the 12 12 imp version better <laughs> like if that was the way that it worked just, oh, just keep making one, one giant imp yeah the one imp i want bigger. different art for it like i want like this just muscle head like venice beach imp at the end that's like wearing like a speedo and has some like lotion just to re- really go ridiculous with it the problem that I have with this card is uh, like like Druid had uh, Whispering Woods or whatever, right? And things like that. And they were able to make some sort of decks with the, that kind of, you know, that token focus and stuff. But they also have, you know, add Death Rattle to all of them and then Savage Roar and things like that, right? And I feel like Warlock doesn't have the ways to utilize these big boards as well. So I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to play a zoo deck with Rafam Scheme in it. I, I'm probably passing on that one. Yeah, on yeah, stream they were it. using board buffs, but it just seems so slow. Yeah. Because I was going to say, even like if you think about Implosion, that at least damaged the other side. It too. did something. So, yeah. yeah, it was a full like swing instead of just a, hey, I got imps now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <at> it. <laughs> I mean, implosion just straight up better than this. <laughs> like, yeah. In a huge way, even if you got a two-plosion. Yep. Yeah. yeah still yeah. did something. Yeah. And so I don't know. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can grim rally and things like that and obviously buff the board. But uh, I just think that there's better ways to do that right now. And there probably always will be than this. <laughs> the schemes, I, I think they're very careful with the schemes, though. Yeah. Everything that I've seen so far, it's like we need to make this not be ridiculous if you let it sit in your hand for, you know, seven, eight turns or whatever. Uh, the 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 best one I think is uh, the but shaman even, one so far. Yeah, even then, if you let Rafam scheme sit in your turn or sit in your hand for seven turns, you'd be summoning a three mana eight eight if it worked that way, which is what Handlock does anyways with their freaking mountain giant. Sure. So yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, and they do it on turn three. So. Yeah. yeah, and they do it on turn three. They don't have to wait seven turns. So yeah. So so mark this everybody as the moment you come and tell us all to eat our hats if somehow this card ends up working and taking Hearthstone by storm, but we don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's move in to 
a lot of warrior cards. A lot of warrior cards on display on this stream, starting with Dr. Boom's Scheme. I think I just rhymed on accident. It's a four-mana common warrior spell that reads gain one armor. It upgrades each turn. Hey, this is better than Rafam's Scheme. No, it's not. This is, it's this hot is the garbage. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better. I think it's better. I can do things with my Ow. armor. I can't do jack with an imp. For one mana, I can get five armor. The turn I draw it, for four mana, I'm going to hold on to this for what, like 30 turns and then gain 30 armor? Listen, I listen, I hope you're right. I hope this is bad. But if we get into some more new version of infinite value bullshit warrior after this, I get to see you just throwing two of these in for when the game hits turn 40 and you just want to break the soul of your opponent. Yeah. I don't think it gets to that point, though, if I just have dead cards in my hand. Like, literally yeah, so cards like that can't good. play until then? To, yeah, this has to sit in your hand for so long. Oh, why would you ever do this? Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a good card. I just think it's better than the scheme, which if you want to... <laughs> it sounds like you want to fight on that, too, but I'm not saying it's a great card. Uh, yeah, Hachikumo's it's... asking if Dead Man's Hand maintains the upgrade. No. Anytime... It just uh, any copies of the schemes. I'm pretty sure they clarified this last week. Any copies of any schemes when they go into your deck or back into your hand or are added from Hagatha or whatever, always the base versions. Never the, the base version. Why yeah. can't they ever make cards work in the interesting way you would like them to work? <laughs> I'm getting cranky on that one. It's just like <laughs> well, that, it's that would be cool. That would get me excited. Yeah. But, but they they've already clarified that that's how things work when they change zones, right? So that's essentially what's happening, right? When you dead man's hand it, it's like the card is moving from your hand to the deck. Now you do actually keep buffs from the deck to the hand and the deck to the board, though, right? So like Keliseth buffs and stuff like that. When I yeah. steal your Keliseth buff cards, they are yeah. still Keliseth buffed. But this is like going in the reverse direction, right? I right. I, I just. It'd be so much cooler, and yeah, it'd be harder to design around, but I guess I'm asking, I would like them to have to design around that, because it sounds really cool, if that's the way some of this stuff actually panned out, but it doesn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, again, though, like, if they made this card really cheap, or upgrade two armor a turn, or something like that, it probably would be getting close to being too good. Yeah. But I don't it's just, think it's, they had to make it this way, and now it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily a problem with the upgrades or anything like that that needs to be changed or the cost. I think maybe they just should have given it a base value that wasn't one. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, as Dill started talking, just I started thinking started that too. Is five or something. All of these schemes... All of these schemes seem a bit like they pigeonholed themselves into this line of thinking. Like, they all start at a base value of one. It's like, well, yeah. do they, they, they have to? I don't think they have to. Yeah. Um, I mean, granted, again, maybe they want it to be bad on purpose, but. Yeah. This is just it's just lame. like, I don't know. How long do I have to hold this for it to match at all the value of a one mana gain five or a three mana gain five draw card? Uh, four mana greater heal or whatever pre spell is four mana heal 12. Yeah. So I'd have to hold this for 11 turns before it's even that, right? It's a long ass time to hold a card in my hand and just have it not even equal the value of an existing card. This could have started at four and been totally fine and still wouldn't have been super exciting if you played it one or two turns later. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you're, you're right. The only way this is ever good is I'm in a deck that literally just is all about fatiguing you and I hold this card forever. And then all of a sudden at the end of the game, I just gain 25 armor. Right. And that scenario to me doesn't seem like it's a viable way for warrior to play in like a post Baku world. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm certainly skeptical as well, but I don't want to count it out just because of the insanity. We are actually still living through. I almost said we just finished <laughs> living through, but we're still living in that, it's, that reality at this moment. <laughs> it's still very much there. Yeah. Infinite value for days, but um, now there, yeah. there is a bunch of this bomb stuff that we're going to talk about. So maybe there is just like, I never do anything and I just put bombs in your deck. And now yeah. I just, that, gain the, that's what that's, making me I, lean in that direction. Yeah. Um, but let's move on. We're not done with warrior spells yet. We got one more warrior spell to talk about, and it's Improve Morale. It's a one-mana common warrior spell that reads, deal one damage to a minion. If it survives, add a lackey to your hand, unless you are streaming from Blizzard at this moment. <laughs> well, this card wasn't the bugged card. It was no, literally but... just lackeys. <laughs> like, yeah. lackeys were bugged. They, they were not showing up no matter how you tried to summon them. 
This, I mean, sure. I don't know if warriors care about lackeys as much as like a rogue does, though. So I, it, we haven't seen the lackey payoff yet for warrior. Um, and if it's there, then sure. I mean, an execute activator and a way to generate value. Warrior seems to like those kind of things. You but, mean you expect warriors to get something along the lines of Togwaggle that interacts with lackeys? I, well, I would hope so. I mean, they have a way to generate lackeys that's in so the they class. Need a, they, they need, need some sort of payoff for it, right? I so far, we've only given, seen bomb things. And so, I was going to say, given all the other stuff, I would expect it to be a, like, if you control a lackey, shuffle in a bomb, I would think. But, yeah, something like that. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But they've also said they're going to be adding more lackeys, which makes me stretch a little bit and think that they may also add more lackey synergy down the road. So even if we don't mm, see it here, possibly. we may see it later in the year. Uh, also, can we just, I'd like to remind everyone, lackeys are all pretty good. Like all of them. <laughs> They're all pretty solid. Uh, and dealing damage to minions is something that warriors have historically wanted to do. Sure. Yep. And I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's got the flexibility. Sometimes I might just need to ping something off the board and I can yeah. do that with it too. So you don't always have to generate the lackey. It, the the what was the other card that did this? It generated a two two, right? It one mana oh. deal of damage, and then if it didn't kill it, it generated a two two. Like that actually put oh, something onto like the board. It was like a card, blood, wasn't it? It was like a Nax card or something. What? Yeah, it's been rotated wasn't for a long like time, a but you still see it here and there in wild. But I mean, that like you know did something to the board. That's why I'm saying like we need to see some sort of lackey payoff for warriors. Uh, Blood to Icker, yeah, there you yeah, go. That's there it. We go. You need to see some sort of uh, I was like, lackey the payoff. For this <laughs> I was yeah. like, something with blood. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> right now it's like we don't see that yet. So this card, I can't really. I don't. Blood to Icker really... was old gods. I was like, I don't old gods. Why there you go. Bad okay. far back, but yeah. Okay. But I mean, putting a two to it, that card never really saw play in constructed, but it did see decent play in arena because you know, deal a damage to a thing, put a two two into play. That's tempo. So, but yeah, this card, it's like, I can't evaluate this until I see all the warrior cards and there's some sort of lackey thing going on. Because right now there's nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing lackey related in warrior. All right. I haven't talked really art other than uh, being grossed out by Tog Waggle. This art, it looks to be a boar tasing another boar. Is there any universe where the, the, the text on this card doesn't say, don't tase me boar? Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got to be it, That's right? It's totally got to be the flavor text. It has to be the flavor text. <laughs> and with that in mind, let's talk about Clockwork Goblin, a three mana, three, three rare warrior mech with a battle cry that reads shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck. When drawn, it explodes for five damage. Okay. The Seaforium Bomber is not rotating, right? We're still going to have that. Seaforium Bomber was a Boomsday so. card, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So that means we got now two that we know of, and then there's some more coming. And I'm like, okay, if I can sh shovel four, five, six bombs reliably, then that's a deck I think you can build. This card by itself is pretty bad, right? Because if it doesn't have other ways to shuffle bombs, playing a three-minute three-three that does nothing the turn I play it is usually not something we do in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like if I can do this enough times. Then I see it, but this this card relies heavily on what other cards do, right? Well, there's Very a legendary true, yeah. that plays into the bombs <laughs> still being in your opponent's deck, but we're saving that for the end of this warrior talk. Uh, <laughs> Omega Devastator is next. The four mana four five epic warrior mech with a battle cry that reads: If you have ten mana crystals, deal ten damage to a minion. More boomsday callbacks here with the Omega Devastator here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems like an Omega card that you actually might want to play. Yeah, this is a good Omega card. Yeah. I haven't seen any good Omega, Omega cards. Like well, they're, they're actually Omega, really good in uh, Arena. They're really the, good in Arena. The Omega card for Warrior, though, saw play. The Omega Assembly that gave you the three mechs. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, I because... mean, again, like uh, Mech Warrior seems to kind of be a thing, which also the Clockwork Goblin kind of feeds into, so... Yeah, if you go late game with Warrior, you also have a way you have a chance to like generate these, right? So exactly, yeah, yeah. And so because uh, and yeah, because Boom is not rotating, so no. they'll still have the Doctor Boom hero card as well. So just mm -hmm. mechs and Warrior in general are good, and we'll probably see it see play just from random generation. But I think this might even just be an include in that kind of tempo-y mechy Warrior deck. 
Yeah, because we're still going to have Super Collider. We're still going to have Arcano thing. Uh, Dynam, whatever it is. What is it? The, <laughs> you know the, what I'm talking uh, about. That does the damage. To yeah, the, deal five yeah, damage to all the... I don't play Odd yeah. <laughs> Um But yeah, yeah we're still going to have a lot of those options. And then this, if you just need to just drop a Yeti on four, that's fine. And then if you can hold on to it or you draw it in the late game, it's like, hey, I'm just going to kill a giant thing. Yeah. Dynomatic, thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to kill like a huge minion on, and I'm going to put a four or five into play, right? Like, and if I'm Dr. Boom, that four or five has rush. Yeah. Wow. That seems really strong. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see if, uh, if Warrior has that archetype. Uh, without the odd portion, right? Yeah, which I I think that it actually will be better because now that we aren't kind of forced down this odd even path, then it makes all of these other <laughs> include all the cards decks sure. seem, seem so much better, right? Like, yeah, you don't have to choose between this Omega Devastator and Dynomatic anymore. Like, you can have both. <laughs> Why That's not? True. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. And you could even include some magnetic y stuff, right? And maybe well, do that's the thing like, that makes this even better than a Yeti, yeah. right? Because magnetic is a keyword that is still going to exist, then you know, there are a lot of different synergies that that mech tag enables. So I think this is a great card. It's super good in arena. Yeah. Super, super good in arena. Because a Yeti is just already pretty good in arena. And now I get a Yeti with an upside. Hell yeah. With double upside, because yeah, the mech tag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrench Caliber is next. I had to compose myself before saying that because I would giggle because it's so dumb. I find it amusing. Uh, it's, a four, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's a dumb name and I love it. It's a four mana, three attack, two durability, epic warrior weapon that reads after your hero attacks, shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck. Bombs have to be really good for me to want to play this. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the goblin in this. I'm like, okay, these cards are all super terrible. So I need a really sweet bomb payoff because I'm just going to be falling behind, 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 filling your deck up with bombs. Am I just going to die before the bombs start to happen or before? That's I where the scheme you? comes in. <laughs> yeah. So so let's just go ahead and talk about all of these bomb cards in conjunction with Blastmaster Boom, the seven mana, seven, seven legendary warrior minion. Uh, whose battle cry reads, summon two 1-1 one, one boom bots for each bomb in your opponent's deck. Uh, these are going to be the same boom bots from original OG Dr. Boom. Yay! I miss them so much. I'm so glad they're coming <laughs> back. Uh, so you get two for each bomb in your opponent's deck. So it's going to be relatively easy to just fill your board with boom bots if you are... I mean, just two bombs in there, and yeah, you're just yeah, like just five minions out of the board. Yeah, right? you got four, you got five yeah. minions, bam. Yeah. One more and you've got a full board. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, though, I don't think this is good enough for me to want to want. Like, yeah, there needs to be another caliber. bomb payoff, I think. This is not strong enough by itself. Yeah, I need, like, <laughs> detonate half the bombs in your opponent's deck. Like, I need a yeah. card like that. I, I don't think they could do... They, they would have to cut down on it because I think there's enough bomb things now where you just murder someone very easily if there's a card like that, but... Chat room saying what I was going to say is that if you play boom after you've played other boom, then all of your boom bots also get rushed. So you That's can true. fill the board and then go pew, 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 pew. That's very true. That is very cool. <laughs> yes, I, I'm so glad that that's a thing, right? Like, yeah, I, I think this is going to be super fun and super cool. <laughs> I, ho I also hope there's a really hilarious voice line if Bo uh, Blastmaster Boom gets played while you are boom. And God <laughs> help me, please add a line for old boom and wild, please. Come yeah, on, there's, Team Five. There's gotta be boom, 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 <laughs> something. Yeah, you I'm know, definitely just, gonna like triple boom. I want that wild song to play, like that. that Aqua song. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like uh, so original Doctor Boom would not be good enough to play in Hearthstone in the current meta that we have. Um, I was going like to say, was, can we just take a second and talk about how, like, <laughs> boom with two boom bots yeah. with Rush and maybe, like, four insane. or six is yeah. we're talking about it not being powerful enough. Whereas, I know. Like, Dr. Boom original used to be auto-include yeah. in, like, everything. Absolutely, <laughs> but he's slowly been just taken out of wild decks. 
Uh, it was Venga Boys. Thank you, Raven. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know the song I mean, though. Come on. And it's going to be stuck in all your heads for like the uh, rest of the My day. brain immediately went to POD because I am a child of the early 2000s. <laughs> but yes. <sighs> um, yeah, this is a cool card. Uh, I don't think it's good enough with what we see here. I, I need to see more more bomb synergy. Yeah, like one one more cool payoff probably needs to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, if I'm gonna yeah. try it, I think this this whole warrior boom bomb mech thing is gonna be super fun. I mean, how many warrior cards are left to see? There's got to be something else bomb related, right? Um, have we seen both the legendaries now? Uh, just the one, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we've seen the other one, so. Yeah, although, just for the sake of crafting a deck, I hope that, God, the other legendary isn't the other missing piece of the bomb puzzle. Because <laughs> uh, that would be, that's a lot of dust. Uh, that is, yeah, uh, it's a lot of dust, and also, if they're both of my payoffs for having bombs in your deck are one ofs, mm, that might that might make it very inconsistent, so. But, like, I mean, for sure, this is going to be, like, day one. People are going to be playing the crap out of Bomb Warrior, right? Like, that's just going to be a thing you're going to see all over the place on day one. Yeah. Because it's just fun. Yeah. I put a call out for questions into the patron Discord earlier, and, and Swagoy is, is is very excited for Bomb Warrior and wanted to know if we think it's going to be a thing. So is our is our consensus, we need to see at least one more thing. We need to see one more synergistic piece and not just the card that puts bombs into your opponent's deck. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a thing day one, regardless of if we see anything else. But will that, will it persist? Will it actually be a viable competitive deck? That I don't know. Because again, it's like I'm relying on my opponent drawing these bombs. I'm relying on me drawing this Dr. Boom or this Blastmaster Boom. I remember, you know, I, there's a lot of things that have to happen, right? For I would like to see a card that manipulates my opponent's deck. I would like to see a card that just reads, put one of your bombs on the top of your opponent's deck. That would be really or, interesting. Or yeah, shuffle them all forward or something like that. That could be sweet too. Oh. Yeah, there's cool things you could do, right? Yeah. 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 They, they've said before, like, we don't want to give you the ability to like discard cards out of your opponent's hand. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. I'm just, I'm just putting some damage at the top of your deck and making you miss a draw. <laughs> I want to see, I, I'd love to see that. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Of course it could get, very annoying. Maybe don't twin spell that card. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. They won't be able to because they're evil anyway. Yeah, yeah, they're the evil guys, so they don't get twin spells. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Anyways. Uh, all right. That's all of the cards I prepared to talk about today, which means we're left with the remains. But before we get to that, we have one more sponsor to thank today, and it's BarkBox. They're back. It's like they heard, folks. They heard that I have the cutest puppy in the world. Oh, I don't know. I'm throwing down because I saw your tweet, Dills. You saw, I my saw tweet. your tweet. <laughs> oh my god, that's like the best tweet I ever made because now I'm just getting all these sweet dog pics. Dude, to me do you, do you, all I, day long. It's so amazing. <laughs> you want to know how to just get the most Twitter replies? There's two things you can tweet about. Your dog being the cutest dog in the world or ask for anime recommendations. Either mm. of those two things, you will have the your biggest tweet of the year. They, they galvanize the Twitterverse. Yep. Yep. And Raven's in the chat room throwing down for his puppy, Bagel. Is your dog named Bagel, Raven? Because or maybe that's he incredible. Just has a really cute like Bagel. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe he's just saying dogs are not as cute bagel. as this Bagel. Yeah, this <laughs> Bagel I have in my hand. <laughs> oh, it's a Beagle. Oh, a Beagle, a beagle. named bagel. bagel. Okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Anyways, uh, if you're unfamiliar with BarkBox, they're a dog obsessed company. They're totally on board with how much you love your dog. Uh, and uh, I don't know. They, they they just love everyone's dog so much. I feel like they wouldn't want to weigh in, Dills, on your and I's uh, throwdown right now of our of our mm. two adorable puppies. I think we can agree that everyone's puppy is freaking adorable. Yes, yeah, that's what I've just, learned. Through puppies this are week. adorable, <laughs> unless it's a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> throwing words. throwing Shot poodle shade. <laughs> poodle shade. <laughs> poodle shade. Uh, but it's great. Uh, if you don't know how it works, uh, you know, you, you just let your, let BarkBox know your dog size. Spoiler alert, I'm a Chihuahua owner. I have to, I go for the smallest size, just insta lock because they're tiny. And then they curate the box to, to meet your dog's needs. They're not going to send you like a, a fireman's hose sized robe for your Chihuahua. I love it. Uh, you can also choose a plan. There's one, six, and 12 month plans available. And then you, you get your bark box. If it's your first time signing up, your, your bark box ships right away. And then subsequent boxes go out on the 15th of each month. 
they are high quality products. I'm always worried about, you know, what I'm giving to my dogs. Um, they're, they are all good. All of the treats are grain free. They do not contain soy, wheat, or corn. And all of the meat is sourced in the USA. And all the treats are either made here in the States or in Canada. Uh, and then there's the 100% happiness guarantee as well. If your dog does not absolutely love something in the bark box, you can let their happy customer service team know, and they're going to send you something your dog will love for free. Uh, uh, we in our house has that ever have, happened in the history of bark box? Has anybody no. like opened it and the dog's like, "No, I don't want this." Awesome. No, no, we get it out of my face. For the longest time, we only had two chihuahuas, and usually we'd get two toys, and they would pick. They would each pick their own, and then eventually they would just end up swapping or like getting a tug of war over it. There was I was never an issue where I'm like, "Oh, that toy's a dud." It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, and, like Iggy. So Iggy goes through toys like crazy, and so it's sweet to get fresh toys every month without having to like you know run off to the store but like they literally by the time a new one will come the old ones are gone they are decimated <laughs> those things yeah they they hold up too really well um they're, yeah they're, they're it's they're surprisingly well made most toys don't last a month with iggy i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and i've i've i'm on my uh second chihuahua puppy in two years their little needle teeth just burn through things uh but not bark box toys i've had really good experience with bark box toys and little needle chihuahua teeth um so check them out uh, we have a URL for you. It is BarkBox.com slash Barking Chicken, and you're going to get yourself a free extra month of BarkBox when you subscribe for a 6- or a 12-month plan. Again, you get yourself a free extra month of BarkBox when you go to BarkBox.com slash Barking Chicken and sign up for a 6- or 12-month plan. We thank them for the support. We thank you all for going to BarkBox.com slash Barking Chicken. I still want to hear that. I want to hear a chicken bark. There's probably a video on the internet. I'm sure there will be one now. I want like a chicken doing a dog impression, not someone just doving over a chicken with a dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good luck. I have a very yeah. specific need, Jocelyn. Very specific. Uh, anyways, let's talk about the cards that have come out since I was in Photoshop this morning. <laughs> uh, starting with a new priest card, Evil Conscriptor. It's a two-mana 2-2 two -two common priest minion with a death rattle that reads, add a lackey to your hand. Okay. I mean, it's fine. Mm -hmm. No more priest quest. That yeah, no up. more priest quest. So, yeah, it's not going to be, you know, progressing any quests or anything not, like not that. Not that but... it was really an abusive quest in the no, but it was, grand it was used a lot in, like, Topsy Turvy and Mechathune. And oh, the... totally, totally. But yeah. I was going to say, there was probably a good two or three weeks where, for some reason, that deck just it popped out of nowhere and went away pretty quick, but it was not fun to play on yeah. ladder for that, like, two weeks. <laughs> but right, right now, Priest doesn't have any lackey payoffs, so this just has to be good enough kind of on its own. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, lackeys are sweet. But it doesn't really add to like any archetype, right? So I'm like, we I'm like super wait and see on a card like this. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of priest cards. Uh, yeah. We saw Forbidden yeah, Words, which doesn't tie into lackeys at all or any, it doesn't have any death rattle synergy. Um, and this, I think those are the only two priest cards we've seen. Yeah, but lackeys do have, lackeys do have uh, utility. So, you know, you could also completely whiff on a lackey and it doesn't do what you need it to do, right? So yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I'm but, forgetting Lazul's scheme. Lazul's Lizul, uh, scheme? Oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that last the, week, but again, no synergy with lackeys or death yeah. rattle or not yet. Cards with evil in their title. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the priest cards have just looked like kind of controlly value cards, right? So I don't know if a two mana two two give me a lackey is part of that plan. We'll see. Yeah. We did see Lazul get revealed. Um, yeah, but it's a three mana three two that allows you to to discover a card from your opponent's hand, right? Right. Yeah, so I'm just saying, I don't like think we talked about it on the show card. Yeah, slow value card. And then Wait. three mana two two death rattle do a thing. I don't know if those go hand in hand. If we'll Lazul see. has been revealed, I completely missed it. Yeah, because I was gonna. Say, it was uh, yeah, a few days. Uh, ago. Have we not talked about? Lizzie? I don't. Yeah, no, I don't think we've talked about her yet. That's why I'm like, no, we've had more priest cards because yeah, yeah, yeah. Lazul, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Lazul was like, like right after. It was like the next day of last week or whatever. 
I guess <laughs> the next day of last week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where I've been, so the, the guide starts been, on Tuesday. The okay. guide I've been pulling from doesn't have it. It's not here. Oh. It's what I've been checking all show long for uh, for things we've seen. So. Well, you're right. It's not there. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, Hearthbone? It was, uh, yeah, it was the original. They even have a, Hearthbone has an article about it. But yeah, it was revealed by the Play Hearthstone Twitter. Because oh. I remember seeing it and being like, this is another milkshake card. Yep. That's yeah, exactly what right, it is. I'm pulling it up yeah. right now and I'm just going to drag it in here. And we got a little spot I can just uh, drop it in. There, there you go. go. Perfect. <laughs> so, Madame Lazul is a three mana, three two legendary priest minion with a battle cry that reads Discover a copy of a card in your opponent's hand. So, you're going to see three cards that are in your opponent's hand. So, that's a lot of information. And then you're going to get to take one and put it into your hand. Mm -hmm. Not like take it. I mean, they'll still have it, but yeah. yeah, you get a copy of it. And then, so it's like, yeah, it's like this is like a value plus information card that would go. Obviously into a milkshake deck, but if we're talking realistic decks, it goes into some sort of a value control oriented style deck, right? Where I just want information about what you got going on, and then I want some value, and I don't mind paying three for a three two. That like I, I have time to do that because I'm not worried about being dead, right? So yeah, I run lots of removal and stuff. A lot, you know, it really just kind of feels like old school priest where they didn't really have a theme outside of trying to just build big minions, right? Like, cause like old priest was just basically kind of slow and controlly and kind of figure it out for yourself sort of things before we started going down, you know, the, these highly synergistic roads that Hearthstone has, has taken in years past. Um, and that's what a lot of these look at. Like I'm none of the, I'm not looking at any of these cards going, Oh, this card feeds into this one this way. Uh, it's not like the, you know, bombs feeding into boom like we just talked about or anything like that. Yeah, this, this card just kind of stands on its own and does a thing. The the um the problem with like a cloning deck and stuff like that is we're losing a bunch of the resurrect cards, right? So Yeah, eternal servitude. So I don't even gone. know if that kind of deck is I, ever going to be viable anymore and Shadow um essence is gone too. I think Shadow cloning, essence, yeah. Cloning gallery losing itself, the spells. I think is the only one. Yeah, cloning gallery sticks around. Obviously, you still have Malagos and Velen and Mind Blast, but the without the gone. ability to like res things reliably You'd be relying just on like cloning things, and oh, and we're losing radiant elemental. Oh, right, God. yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, we're just not gonna play that deck anymore. So rather than OTK people, maybe we slow down and we just get value generating cards and removal. Which is always how I liked my priest. That or curving yeah. out with dragons perfectly. Mm, I like dragon priest too. Yeah, that was a good archetype. It's what I took into the first ever Brawlicium. <laughs> Um, but yeah, a super fun card, super, super fun card. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy playing this in my milkshake deck for sure. Yeah. I like low cost legendaries that are just kind of good on their own. Like do a, a halfway decent thing. Um, and I, I, I feel like we don't see enough of them. So I like Madame Lazul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people talk about comparing this to Camellias, but the thing about Camellias is you had to hold on to it for a while to get this amount of information. And also you had to wait for it to turn into something that was then useful to you. I feel like the discover mechanic of it means it's a card I can just play out, right? I don't have to like sit there and hold on to it for a while. I can draw it and just play it. Yeah. And I think that has a lot of value. Whereas Camellius, I had to draw it and then wait and then hope it turned into something cool. And then keep tracking what it kept turning into. It's like that why it never worked. I'm still so bummed about Camellius because I cracked a golden one. <laughs> I golden one too, yeah. I was just saying, even if it turned into something cool, you also had to hope it turned into something cool on the turn when you wanted to play it, and when that you, you had enough that, cool that you thing. could, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, this yeah, this I could take something like I could take. Let's say I'm playing against a mage or whatever, and I see that they have Caligos. I'm like, well, I'll take that, and I know in a bunch of turns I'll be able to use it. Like you can kind of just take something that you know you're gonna want, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to like get lucky and strike gold. Which Camellios had to do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's talk about Evil Genius. It's a two mana, two, two common warlock card with a battle cry that reads Destroy a friendly minion to add two random lackeys to your hand. All right. That's a lot of lackey generation for a small amount of mana. And it's an activator for, I, I mean, what eggs are we still going to have? Any? Uh, I guess we're going to have the uh... little. The little one that makes one ones, right? The zero two that makes one ones. Yeah. 
Well, what are you, what are you talking and about, man? You're going to reform scheme into some imps, and then you're going to kill them with your evil genius. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, Scarab Egg. Yeah, we're still going to yeah. have that. Maybe another egg will be introduced, too. Who knows? So but. maybe token warlock? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have, like, a zoo-style egg warlock thing and you can generate a bunch of lackeys, like, that seems like that'll be sweet. I, I can definitely see that working out in the deck. I don't think you use the scheme to do that, but yeah. I think, yeah. I think the two use... slot is open again now because Kelis sure, Kelis is out of there. Running. So yeah, so two mana is now a viable slot. Thank <laughs> God. Two drops, bro. Oh my God! Do not let hit... Kelis set. Don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. <laughs> yeah, none of us are sad about that one. Yeah. The beginning of but the yeah, stream. We're, we're, we're going to need about... viable two drops now, right? So here you go. This could be it. Yep. Yep. Uh, Jocelyn, I'm just gonna give this one to you because it's a wind runner. We got the final Windrunner. <laughs> Verissa is coming. I'm super stoked because I think she's just awesome. <laughs> as a Warcraft character. Should say that as a Warcraft character. So she's a seven mana, five, six hunter legendary with a battle cry that says equip Thoradal, the star's fury. Not familiar with this weapon. You guys who've been around longer than me possibly know if this is an actual like Warcraft weapon? I don't. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but it's kind of like it's it's kind of cool that the card art. Uh, it is, is in World of Warcraft. Okay. Is it okay? Sunwell Legendary. All right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> uh, but it's not really the Sunwell. artwork represents kind of what the weapon does. She's shooting at like three little uh, arrows there, and it's a two-three weapon. And when you attack, you get uh, plus two spell damage that turn. Yeah. Which is actually, it's pretty cool because you actually just straight up equip the weapon. You don't get it in your hand. So yeah, yeah, you just yeah, you just put it on because it, yeah. it costs three if it were to somehow generate it some other way. But yeah, seven mana, five six plus equip a two three weapon at the same time. Yeah, one weapon. Ah, chat room is saying apparently in WoW it was the first hunter weapon that got rid of the need for ammo. Oh, yeah. I remember that this. Was what I was super cool this. about it. Yeah. Um, I I had a, a classmate. I was not raiding some all the time, but I had a classmate that was just grinding so well. And I was a hunter at the time, and I was just like, oh my god, it would be so cool to have this. I wouldn't have to carry arrows around anymore. And then uh, arrows just went away. I didn't need to worry <laughs> about them anymore. Yeah, but so, I, you know, okay, a two mana, two, three weapon that you equip and also play five, six at the same time, but you have to pay seven, four. It feels like, okay, I'm going to need to get, like, instant gratification from this, which means if I play it on seven, I can't utilize the effect of the weapon. On turn seven, how many things am I killing with a two, three weapon? Most of the time, I probably just want to, like, hit you in the face and then use some sort of a spell to deal a bunch of damage, but we don't really have that spell right now in Hunter. Yeah, hunters don't like hunters have a lot of spells. I mean, I guess I mean, kill command. Yeah, Most kill of command. them are damage based, right? Yeah, Most of them explosive are, yeah. shot, arcane shot. Um, this is a kill decent. command. I mean, kill command is enough, I think, in its own right. If we're talking about mm. it's just historically been a burn spell for hunter that has the added flex of helping you control the board if you really have to. Yeah, but if I'm playing a deck with kill commands and stuff, I'm probably not playing a seven mana five six. That's not a beast. That yeah, turns off master's call. Like this is gonna turn. Yeah, like you, I don't know. I look at it and I go, well, as long as master's call is here, I don't think I'm playing a deck that ever doesn't run only beasts, mm -hmm. right? I think I'm pretty much locked into the I play a bunch of beasts and then I draw three of them at a time when I need to reload. And this card says, no, you can't do that anymore. So I think this so. This card is a big probably not for me. Yeah, I think so too. But in a year's time. <laughs> Yeah, Master's Call will be gone. And then the you're like, hey, goes away. Get back in my deck. But we, I think also, we need more than just the three spells we mentioned. So I'm guessing that we're probably going to see some sort of a damage-based hunter spell in this set. Yeah, because even their twin spell that they got that we talked about off the top of the show, Unleash the Beast, doesn't, it summons, it doesn't do damage. So Yeah, yeah. It's just weird to have this card be the, the legendary if there's not going to be some sort of spell that's really sweet with it, right? Yeah, and the other Hunter Legendary, I think we talked about last week, the Oblivitron has to do with mechs and death rattles. So, yeah, this, it seems... I don't a know. Solitaire brings a Baited Arrow in the chat, by the way. Mm. Baited Arrow and uh, Flanking Strike. Those would be actually two good ones. Okay, so yeah, have... yeah, yeah. So, 
Because it's it's not forcing you to send the damage phase from your spells. No. True, true. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, those those would be sweet. Is, is flanking strike rotating though? I don't know. Yeah, that was that's. I'm just. Arrow is I not. think flanking strike is flanking a kobolds? which okay. would. Wasn't yeah. it? Oh, is it kobolds? No, it's kobolds. Yeah. yeah. So oh, okay. we won't have flanking strike. Really At least oh, well. I mean, obviously it's always in uh, wild. Oh, but yeah. baited arrow dealing five and then overkilling creating a five five that is actually pretty sweet. Yeah, so that's that, good. that could be a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's maybe a solid maybe, but I yeah. think you're right, Dills. I think that although it could be cool and could work with those things, I don't think this is the most powerful we'll see play hunter deck. I think it's still yeah, yeah. They it's led Master's with Master's College is yeah. so freaking good. Yeah. yeah, they they led with Calgos. I'm expecting Varisa to also give me a spell to fire off with plus two spell damage. <laughs> but I, I like this card a lot. Um, but uh, I love the card art. I want her golden. I want my full set of Windrunner sisters. I just everything, all of it. Yay! <laughs> so we haven't gotten Illyria as a playable card, right? No, but she is my hunter. So I don't you're play gonna go to Star, you're so gonna go to wild. Her. Okay, you're gonna, gonna go, go to wild. wild. Play Sylvanas and Brisa and Brisa, be happy. and you have Illyria as your hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're done. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it doesn't mean we won't get Illyria at some point. I mean, we're getting Cadgar this this True. expansion. Yeah. So. Which you can't really have a defending Dalaran set without putting Cadgar in it, really and truly. Like that would be a huge mistake if he wasn't the Mage Legendary. <laughs> Knowledge is power, Jocelyn. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's talk about some neutrals. <laughs> so one of these I think is okay. Uh, but uh, first up is Traveling Healer, a four mana three two with Divine Shield and a Battle Cry that restores three health. Cool. Seems like an arena card to yeah, me. Yeah, it's arena fodder, right? Yep. Yep. It'll be fine in arena because a 3 2 with Divine Shield can definitely pick off a couple of minions. And also, if you can restore three health to something, get an extra trade out of that guy, that's, yeah, you're generating yeah, a lot of value and potential. So. Even if Zoo wasn't losing their healing package, I wouldn't. Uh, this is too expensive even for that, I think. Um, I mean, you could kind of compare it to. Uh, which we call Jocelyn's favorite card. Um, deal Uh-oh. three, gain three. Play a three, three for four. You know what, what, am I, about? what am I there forgetting? Was a better walk, Shaman. Life drinker. Oh, 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 oh. gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. You can kind of get the life drinker in a zoo deck. Every like possible sparkly unicorn type card I could think of. <laughs> like, no, but you always talk about. Yeah, like, no, you're like, oh, this is definitely a good card, and like, yes. I was like, yeah, it's not. And then it was actually good, and like, definitely a yes. few. So, uh, chat room actually missing the the like the the snap responses with card names we can't think of because Leon just goes the mosquito, the mosquito. <laughs> yeah. But are we? But is, do we still? Happy Ghoul is going away, isn't it? Happy so, Ghoul, yeah. yeah Happy Ghoul is out of so, like, uh, 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 deck isn't even going to be a thing anymore. Yep. Yep. And we're losing Fungal Enchanter, I think. Right. So the Fungal Enchanter was no, that's Witchwood, isn't it? Is we had it? all those little oh, okay. mushroom dudes out of Witchwood, didn't we? Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, but we're still losing like but the most important the, piece. The goal yeah, the is the reason. Yeah, yeah, the goal yeah. is the reason we were we were doing that. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not super. It is an arena card, I think, more than anything else, unless we get some kind of new healing package. I'm not uh, aware of. Uh, and then the final card we're going to talk about today is another neutral. It's Evil Cable Rat, a two mana one one, a common neutral beast with a battle cry that adds a lackey to your hand. So if if lackey synergy just run you know just takes over, maybe you'll consider playing this. Yeah, I think it just like you said, it depends on how synergistic we get with lackeys in general. And so evil cable rat is the actual name. It's not some placeholder or something from a foreign language site. That I don't know. Get. Oh. I, I just I just go with what I see online. Oh, okay. It just it's such a, like what's a cable rat? I'm not gonna like deep dive uh, investigative <laughs> journalist uh, of of neutral. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I know I know that evil is the organization, guys. Um, I have been. Oh wait, that being said though, no, 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 cable. Um, <laughs> I know like cable ferrets are a thing. Like they used to use like rodents to run cable. Like, they would tie really? a cable to a rodent and have them run it through conduit. Huh. Interesting. I don't think that's still a thing they do. I hope. 
Okay, all right then. I, oh, I Kim Rat was on the stream reveal. Okay, I did not make it all the way through the stream reveal. Yeah, no, and we're going to talk about the stream reveal in a second, guys. Yeah. But yeah, no. once, once, once. I, I admit I definitely did not pay a lot of attention to that stream. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was um hard to watch. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little, uh, was a little on the rough side. Uh, but before we're 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 right out of the card uh, the card discussion, we did uh, I did pull another question from the Patreon Discord. Which you, if you're a, a Patreon supporter of Angry Chicken and you have your Discord link to Patreon, congratulations, you're already automatically in the Angry Chicken Discord. And you can drop us questions there and just skip the inbox entirely and not get buried. Uh, Synth Paradox said that uh, it looks like the callback cards are from the expansions of the villain. Uh, so Togwaggle. Uh, Cobalt and Calicombs giving us the unidentified, uh, unidentified contract. Boom from Boomsday giving us the Omega Devastator. I would also argue there's like the callback to the original Boom with his actual OG Boom bots. Uh, Lazul, Old God's Forbidden Words. What do you think the callbacks for Hagatha and Rafam are going to be? I mean, I think we kind of already got them, right? Because Rafam is giving us a Golden Monkey-esque effect, which was from his expansion. Yeah, that's true. Um, that was also the Discover expansion, but Discover has become so prolific through Hearthstone that you can't really say like, oh, Reform and that class is going to have anything to do with Discover because just everybody discovers. So, But that was the big thing from League of Explorers was that was the introduction of the Discover mechanic. So I, I think you're right, Garrett, that the, the golden monkey type thing is his callback. And yeah. for Hagatha, I mean, Hagatha was mm. the, I think, uh Shaman Rush. spells. Huh? It's shaman spells. I mean, she's she's teaching shaman spells to the minion she summons, and that's what you were generating shaman spells through her uh, hero card, mm -hmm. and actually still will be. She's not going away. I don't know why I'm talking about Hagatha in past tense. <laughs> well, Hagatha Witchwood was also when we got Baku and Gen, so I think we're just gonna get Baku and Gen again. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, so they have to replace them, right? Because <laughs> the I mean, because that was like it's because the way this kind of worked is they're giving us like the classic other thing they introduced in that set, right? Like the yeah. you know, a forbidden so thing. Baku, well, yeah, they'll just introduce a new Baku way to do odd and even text. Sun creator? <laughs> it won't be that good. <laughs> It'll just be bad. I, I'm actually like, what? was there any other like theme thing that happened in that set? Was that the Lifesteal set? Was that when uh, Lifesteal was introduced? No, Lifesteal was before that, I think. Okay. Yeah, Lifesteal was, was Witchwood? Was Rush Life introduced then? Like something else was introduced, right? I think it Rush was, yeah, was, it was Rush Witchwood. and Rush and Echo, I think. Oh, were. and the stat swapping thing was happening too, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, the Gilnean werewolf yeah. thing. Worgen. Okay, sorry, maybe Worgen. some stat swapping guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've already gotten them. I think they've already been revealed. I think the callbacks are already here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I guess we could see more, right? Well, we already saw Hagatha's scheme, so... And that's just dealing ma damage to minions. That's just doing shaman things. So, yeah, I, I think the teaching spells is already the Hagatha kind of call back to herself. So. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I think there's going to be something else because yeah, they've be they've, they've, they've else, had yeah. that thing and then they've had the like the Doctor Boom. They they talked on the stream that the new Doctor Boom is like because there's two sets with Doctor Boom. They gave us an Omega thing to call back to Boom's Bay, and they gave us the original Doctor Boom as a call back to GVG when we actually first got Dr. Boom, right? So it's like they had to call back to two sets in that one. Mm -hmm. And the other ones are trying to call back to one set with generally just one card. So yeah, we're, I think we are going to get something. I think we're going to get something. Like the stat Blizzard, swapping yeah. thing makes sense for the Hagatha one. And then because, what's the yeah, other like one? The, the unidentified contract doesn't have anything to do with the villain or the scheme. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rafam, and maybe we get something because Rafam was a uh, League of Explorers. Maybe we get like a Reno Jackson -y type effect again um, in some sort of fashion right could be or a sir finley mergleton type effect where you oh i miss sir finley change your hero power <laughs> to something else he still has one of my favorite voices of any card in the entire game i'm trying Side to think note, of what I'm else so happened in league put him in wow <laughs> yeah I'm trying to think of what what else happened in league that was like a defining thing of like multiple cards but you're discover right was it was the only thing discover because it was an adventure right so yeah there was only but, the whatever it was 40 yeah, the other big cards. thing from league was reno and that's only one card and they're, they're, yeah. i don't think they're bringing that back well there's the brand like effect the, the reno effect and the putting things in in your deck or your opponent's deck like you had a lease that put the map and you also mm -hmm. had reform that put the wasn't it the curse or something 
Yeah. So maybe there's some, I don't know. But then there's a lot of shuffling that's happening again in Hearthstone now. Like it, there's a lot of things from, especially League of Explorers, because it was so um, early on in Hearthstone's development that there were a lot of cool ideas that they've iterated on from that expansion, much more so than like Boomsday. It's really obvious to say like, oh, Boomsday, obviously that's Omega. That's, you know, because mm-hmm. they haven't had 18 sets since then. So I know that that's an exaggeration. But, <laughs> you know, like... League of Explorers, they had a lot of cool ideas that they've then iterated on since then. So it's a little bit harder, especially where Discover caught on in a way that like Joust never did. And so I think it's like, it was a good mechanic. They've reused it a lot. So the callback there might be a little bit less uh, obvious. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Discover has like just been a thing since then. You know, if if League only gets the one callback, I think it's okay because Discover is permanent and will never stop being added to new cards. It would be cool to see some some new Reno type effect because like I'm all about like just still playing Reno decks and wild and stuff. So if I can get another thing to add and I like and I would like to see it be a neutral. Um like I, the the Kazaka stuff was cool and everything, but it was kind of a bummer. And then now to like the other day, I was playing a sweet Reno Shaman. I had like jades and stuff and Shutterwalk and everything. And I'm like, it really sucks that I could. I, all I have is Reno. I don't have the Kazakas. And, yeah, no, I'm 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 with stuff. you there because like both that and Kazakas, it's not like they. I mean, they were prominent for sure, but it it, it didn't good. rule the game the same way that Odd and Even has. Exactly. Yeah. And they still were like, you got to draw them like and you got to do that. And it's not even like the Keliset thing where if I draw it on two, it's like, oh, cool. Now you just kind of win. Uh, when you drew them, it still gave the opponent a chance to to come back. I and feel something. like maybe we've got some rose colored glasses on right now because the feel that I remember from when League was rotating, everyone was pretty ready to be rid of Reno and one of decks. No way, man. I still play the hell out of them today. I, I don't have rose colored nothing on when I have Reno because I like you played might. one two days ago. <laughs> you might, but I'm saying the general feel of the community was it was time to move away from that style of deck. Yeah, but, but compare it, it to... Cool to bring it back in for sure. But but, but are, are, is it on the same level as Odd and Even or even no. Yogg or, no or Rexar? Have been to Reddit? Everything is always up here. This is the Reddit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. asking Reddit. I'm, as, I'm asking <laughs> Jocelyn Kearney. Yeah. <laughs> I was, no, I was told I was ready to be done with Reno and move on to a different style for sure. Not that, was to, like, that was actually not one of the times where I was sad about a rotation. Like I, I remember just being like, man, I'm going to miss that. I'm gonna miss that Reno stuff. I miss old gods except for Yogg. <laughs> I really well, liked old once gods. Once they changed Yogg, you didn't have yeah. to worry about it at all. Um, well, true, yeah, fair. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, but like, also, like, yeah, I mean, I think you just get fatigued no matter what a little bit when the thing is just kind of prominent. So, like Jade, people were fatigued with Jade. And yeah, exactly. Really, not that big of a deal. And you that's know, all I was saying. <laughs> people were fatigued. The, the with, fatigue was there at the time yeah. of rotation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, you, you totally trigger me because I'm like, burn in hell, even an odd, burn in hell. <laughs> yeah, I think the the problem with even Reno an odd is a saint. They, it's like you insulted my dad. The, dynamic the whole game from start yeah. to finish, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, even I was pretty cool, kind of blew my mind that it worked, uh, but I'm very, very happy to see it go. So, anyways. I'm still nervous it's going to be there in a while, but I don't yeah. know. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Haven't really had a chance to talk about the stream itself yet. I, I think all three of us are kind of like, well, this is kind of rough. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. It was it was, it was, was definitely the worst of their reveal streams, but I think a lot of people talked like as if the other ones were freaking amazing, and Jocelyn, you were talking about this before the show. Like, They haven't really nailed this down yet. So Yeah, I don't really understand personally why they do reveal streams with live gameplay. I think that the streams that they've done previously in terms of like, uh, think maybe not even necessarily streams, but like presentations, like think about the way they do BlizzCon where it's like, whoosh, here's a new card. And then here's a pre-recorded animation of how that card works in, because I understand why like seeing the animations and the voice lines, yeah. and how those synergies work and things like that. That's interesting and valid and something that people are going to want to watch. Um, but if you like never draw the card in the reveal stream or, you know, like there's just so many reasons why live gameplay is not necessarily the best way to show things off. Um, 
I think I, I'm ready for a more polished version of a reveal stream because it's not it's not just this one for me. I don't like the reveal streams done with the live gameplay, period. <laughs> I think they're real crap. And I don't think they're good to watch. So I, I'm not a fan of this reveal style anyways, but this one, when you like combine the too many personalities as well, or I guess too many voices, as well as just the tech issues and, and everything else, it was- Yeah, I mean, uh, tech issues, they happen. Um, right. And, yeah. and certainly yeah. if you're of the mind that, oh, I'd rather see a polished edited version, then yeah, tech issues wouldn't happen because they can just edit it out. Um, I mean, it, it just felt like a lot of times they just slammed on the brakes for whatever reason, tech issues or to explain things that didn't need explaining or whatever. It just as soon as it would kind of start to go, it was like, bam, brakes, because who needs to know what GVD is like just stuff like that. And I yeah, the stream wasn't. <laughs> I think there's no reason for them not to pre-record it because they're not interacting no. with chat. Like I don't understand yeah. why they feel the need to do this all totally live, right? Like, yeah, like you could make a really sweet polished thing at BlizzCon. You've got like I, I know what you're talking about. Like when we were all sitting in the audience at BlizzCon and Ben Bros revealing League, uh, what was it? It was uh, whatever it was it was the patches. patches. It was yeah, patches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it seems yeah. like you know exactly what I'm talking and about. And that was sweet, right? When we saw yeah, patches we and we were like. Home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then here's what it'll look like. And then you're like, cool, got it. Uh, but then... <laughs> Even the, though that's not how it ended up working, but yes. Well, sure. But I mean, like, it, you you know, you got to see whatever, like, they wanted to show you about it. And then I don't understand why they need to do it live. I, I do want to throw some support towards Cora, though, because oh, I think yeah. she got the brunt of the hate for something that was not her fault at all. Uh, I think she was put in a in a tough situation, and I think she did the best she could with it. But, you know, one of yeah, the suggestions I, I had be. was not yeah. have her be the one playing and talking about the cards. Like maybe have two people playing and then they could have her and Peter talking about the cards and she doesn't have to try to multitask and do everything. Yeah. Uh, they, they did that. That would probably work better, but I think you're right. Pre-recorded. Let's just get to the cards. Let's not have all this rigmarole. I, I, just I, be better. I think it would have been better. fine to have your, your, your talent, uh, influencer, whatever the hell you want to call them. I hate that word, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been fine. It's fine having them, I think, play and talk, but it, 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 I get the sense that they this is their first time playing with these cards. Like, why not well, let the them get... Do, right? Show them the cards ahead of time. Like, <laughs> so that we're, we don't have all these questions and then just have Peter there just in case a, a question does pop up. It did not need to be three people. Uh, no, two just, people is better, too. But I, they they do want the genuine reaction, right? Like when you had day nine on, he's like, oh my God, this card. And you know, that kind of thing. But it does make it so that it slows things down for sure. It's just, it's just like the formula that they're using right now. I think they just, just, kind of just yeah. dump it and start fresh I, and do something. I, yeah. But yeah. I think whether it's day nine or core, I think they both have the talent to where if they knew the cards ahead of time, I think they would still have that enthusiasm. Like the card comes off the deck. They're going to be like, oh guys, I'm just so stoked. It's this card. Wait till you see what it does. Like you can still have that sure. if that's your direction, sure. if that's what you're trying to channel. Um, I, I don't. I don't think all of the uh, the constant break hitting that was <laughs> put in place on this stream is is worth the genuine reaction. Yeah. yeah, it gave me anxiety to watch the rope keep fucking. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, uh, One forty-seven. Leave it, Garrett, if you want. But it was just that. That is the level of frustration I had watching it. I was like, oh, come on, do something, please. You know, and it's like it made me feel anxious watching it and as a viewer you won't you don't want to feel that yeah, right yeah. you just want to feel excited I mean, to see the cards it is worth saying that like they don't have to do this you know they could just throw freaking stills up and be done with it and this is just extra content so it's fine for it to yeah. be a little more fun and off the cuff like i get it it also i would assume it would take a lot more time to put together a really nicely cut together video versus hey let's just have everybody's favorite personalities come over here sit down with the dev and play the game um, yeah. I mean, there's something very uh, kind of investing in the nature of Twitch in that in that way. Um, it's just that my it, it, just the whole time I was like, oh, man, there's just too many cooks in the kitchen. Why is everybody talking over yeah. each other? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. It's also, that's a podcaster. Me, I'm going to be more biased towards that. But hey, maybe get a podcaster to help you with this. Sure, maybe <laughs> there was definitely some improvements. Like their set was nice. <laughs> they made a big deal about well, that. that yeah, the, set, the thing about that is um, uh, so the, shared, the right? World of Warcraft Q 
Q&A use the exact same one. That's now like the Blizzard Q&A yeah. set. And it is a big improvement because I know, especially in the Warcraft Q&A one, but we've definitely had the same issues with Hearthstone ones in the past, is because they didn't have lapel mics until now, it was the, I'm getting really loud, I'm getting really quiet, moving mm. away and around from the mic, that they got rid of that problem. And that was a huge problem in across all Blizzard properties. So I think that, that like it's really good that they're in that space now. But just because there's room for three people doesn't mean you doesn't should mean have you three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a much better set for sure. Um, so there's one more stream coming, and it's going to be a Kibler Dene one. So hopefully the feedback has reached the proper ears, and uh, this one goes smoother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I don't I, also... I don't always watch them all anyway, even though I'm a big Day Nine fan. Uh, and back back when he and Broad were on, I thought they were just like this power duo of hilarity that really hit me in the funny bone. Um, sure, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, like even Dana that is... not playing Hearthstone right now, though. He's he's firmly entrenched in MTG Arena. Oh, yes. so good good for him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's just he's he's always been more of a magic guy anyway. Hearthstone was yeah, just like I mean, the... when I kind of fell off StarCraft, the thing that kind of kept me as a fan of Day Nine was that it, yeah. suddenly he was talking magic over on his channel. I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to my first Grand Prix. I'm going to see what Day Nine has to say about it. Um, sure, yeah. and Spell Slingers, if you ever watch that, and Geek and Sundry yeah. is like a super good YouTube show. Like he's, it made total sense to me that he swapped over. So it makes sense that they're not using him yeah. for the stream. But I, I do think you're right. That was the height of the uh, reveal stream because of the dynamic between the two people that were on it. Yeah. So we'll but see even, if the name can like, match that. They had so they had the live gameplay, but then after that, they had to be like, oh, and here's all the cards that we didn't get to see. Yep. Like why? <laughs> why? <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. Just I, don't, I mean, that's I how they like. We could have just done that part. That right? is how they've yeah. always. That is how they've always done it. But yeah, I, it's almost like they should maybe lead with the cards and then play some games, not the other way sure. around. I don't know. There you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Give me the, the cards and then hey, let's jump into a couple of games yeah. and have fun. We've already <laughs> talked about the cards. Yeah. Although yeah. that being said, it's going to give uh, the the Reddit pros of the world a lot of opinions on how they should be playing with the new cards when they come off the top if you know them ahead of time. But whatever. People that are happens bastards anyways. anyway. Exactly. Yeah, that stuff was silly. Like people were like t- saying that Cora was playing badly. It's like, are you serious? Yeah. It's like the stupidest thing to be complaining about in this scenario. It's like, no, you can complain about all the things we just talked about. Fine, <laughs> fair enough. But to be like, I need pro level play with the new cards. Like, <laughs> yeah. sit Get down. Out. Like, just. <laughs> I have no patience for you. You're a useless person. So, anyways, uh, one more thing we have to talk about before we call this a show is that the Grandmasters format has been leaked. Also, Roger was banned because timeliness. Roger and real? Is that and real, yeah. Real? Okay. Which I think I do need to say, uh, I think I was saying it was Shoxy when we were doing the Roger discussion a few weeks ago, so I guess I had the wrong player, so apologies. That's who I thought it was, too, but I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess not. Something I read mentioned that player as well, so... Uh, yeah, it could be, could be wrong. But maybe with- he just wasn't, like, because, okay, so the actual ban, though, by the way, is they're only banned from the Grand Master, like, yes. portion. They could still play in the other stuff, which is weird, because it's a one-year ban, but only from this. Yes. Uh, but it sounds to me like maybe these were the two that would have gotten invites, and that's why these are the two that are banned, and the other guy might just have not been invited, period, so it doesn't matter. He doesn't need yeah. any ban. Yeah. So, so yeah, I do think we should talk about the, the leaked format first before we talk too much about the impact of the band. So basically the leaked format, so I, this whole entire thing, aside from Roger's band, is a rumor. You should say that. So I'm not going to say rumored before every single thing, but just this whole entire thing is a rumor. It's a leak. They're expecting Blizzard is actually going to make a Grandmaster announcement probably this week, especially if it was going to be next week, then... It, the leak came out, so it's probably going to be faster. So two seasons per year, eight weeks each, 16 players per region split into two groups. So each region will have two groups of eight players that play twice a week in a round robin system, facing everyone in their group twice over the course of the eight weeks. Um, they play the matches Friday to Sunday, and all the regions are going to be played back to back. So like, as China ends, then APAC will start. And then as APAC ends, Europe will start. And then as Europe ends, NA will mm-hmm. start, which 
I think is really cool. We're literally going to be looking at, you know, 24 hours of Hearthstone straight. <laughs> from but Friday. in like shorter formats than having to watch a whole tournament every yeah. single time, right? Like you can like tune in and out almost like you're watching. Like I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, my guy is on. Like when the Giants are on in baseball, I watch the Giants. Like I'm just going to watch when, you know, Frozen is playing. Like I'm not going to watch every <laughs> single freaking time, you know? So yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. Which I think is what they're kind of hoping will happen, right? Especially with, uh, yeah. uh, with the added uh, new format of being single deck. You're going to be thinking of players as classes. You're going to be thinking of, well, I think we already think of, you probably have your favorite players, but now it's going to be something more to kind of, get into on a personal level which is the classes almost like they're specialists oh yeah <laughs> yeah i by the way still think there's a lot of games this seems like a lot of games to me it still. is a lot but yeah again it's like i don't have to feel like i need to tune into the whole damn thing to like know what's going on so i don't know well it's, yeah the, the whole entire like better. round robin seasons is going to be 16 weeks right over mm -hmm. spread out over the course of the year so there's going to be like two eight week chunks so I, I think that's a lot better and we'll probably see less fatigue than the mm -hmm. almost weekly tour stops. But um, so yeah, Friday to Sunday matches. And then after the end of the second season, and obviously this is a leak, so no confirmations of anything, it, this might be after, you know, every season after that, maybe, I don't know. But after the second season ends, the two worst performers from season two will no longer be grandmasters, which then leads me to believe that those two season two spots will be available to some sort of deciding factor from yeah, the people uh, from the lower tier will from move the lower the past performers will move, will move in yeah essentially yeah. It's like but relegation in uh it's like relegation in football. Yeah, exactly. it's like codes and starcraft which i've been watching a lot of lately mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. i mean so yeah so like when we talked about this before one of the concerns i know jocelyn especially had was if it's invite only, are the original invited players going to be like personalities? Or are they going to be top level pro players who have performed really well? It looks like what they've done is essentially taken people from the from the people who have done well in the format that they've had previously with the point system and everything. Mm -hmm. They've just kind of been like, okay, we've invited those people, and that's our starting group. And then now it'll be just like this kind of slow rotation in and out based on your performance from here on out. Yeah, and I think that slow is really the key word here because it it's two people out of 16 in each region once a year for the first year. Mm -hmm. So there is no relegation after season one. This The relegation the relegation is after season two. I know. So, I think it should be a seasonal relegation, honestly. but And, and it might be going forward. Eventually um, it might be, yeah. Yeah, we don't. And we I don't could see four that. players instead of yeah, two. Four. That way there's more opportunity to move in, you know? Yeah. Four out of 16, I think, feel, I mean, I, maybe I'm just a jerk, but I might even push <laughs> it up to eight. <laughs> like That's pretty four, large, but uh, pretty yeah, that large, actually but, wouldn't be terrible either. I don't know. I don't mind seeing movement in and out. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Because there's a lot of money tied to this. So each player gets $1,000 a week as an appearance fee and then an extra $500 on top of that if they win. Plus, there's a global finals with a $500,000 prize pool. So there's a lot of money available at this top tier. Mm -hmm. And so if you're only doing two or even if we say call it two per season, so four a year, that's really not a lot of, you know, movement in that group, There's no, which is kind of good for the pro players because it means it's more of a guaranteed salary. But it's going to be very, very hard for people to break in. And there's a lot of really, really good Hearthstone players. Like if you look at even the top 32 cuts from a lot of the two, a lot of the tour stops, like there's a lot of really well-known good players in those groups. And like as much as I agree with the currently invited rumored players, there's just so many other people that I feel like are like right on that cusp that are going to have such a hard time and might walk away from Hearthstone if they only have one shot at two spots a year. I don't know. It seems no, like they a might. conversation to me. Yeah. But I also do think that when you earn this spot, it should feel like fairly secure that I'm now, because earning it is so hard that you don't want to feel like earning it is just like, oh, but it might all be gone literally in six months. And like I, all that hard work I did to get here is all gone instantly right I, I do i like i want the number to be big enough that it allows people to feel like it's possible to get in but not too big that it's like suddenly it's it feels really freaking hard to keep your spot and be <laughs> 
considered like a pro, like a guy who can actually make a decent salary playing. Because like I think about Magic and a system that's worked pretty well for them for a long time is you get to this level and you're essentially like there are some people like Hall of Fame means you're permanently invited if you want to come, right? Yeah. Um, like you kind of just reached God tier status. No one can touch you anymore. You're fine. And then there's this level of like, okay, I now I'm platinum or whatever. And that means that I get my hotel and my flight paid for and I can go to all the tournaments and well, and like they get to hold on to that for a while, but earning that is really friggin' important and hard. And when you do, you get it for a while. It's like, or like a PGA tour card, you play really hard on like the web.com tour. And then when you finally earn your card, it just kind of means, okay, cool. I'm good for a while. And then if I really suck, then yeah, I lose it. But I know that I'm good for a while. And yeah. I would like it to be kind of like that, but there's a, there's well, a number, even, there's like, a sweet you, spot in there. Right? Yeah. If you look at, I, I think two is, is too few and maybe four is, is a better kind of number there. Like maybe, you know, the bottom quarter of the players. Cause if four, if four people every six months get relegated, mm -hmm. that still leaves 12 people that are totally secure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that seems like a decent number because yeah, it opens up opportunity without, penalizing you for finishing you know like if it was eight i'd be like oh man i finished ninth and now i'm done i'm gone yeah. like that's you know i think that's rough so there's there's a sweet spot i don't know if this is it it probably isn't yeah but there's, there's, i like the system and i like that i can i do want to see similar names over and over if they're guys who are doing well so well it's something that's going to do what the tour stop i think was attempting to do the tour stop system was attempting to do which was kind of create some stories in Hearthstone and some through lines with some players and, you know, get you behind people. Like, I mean, just saying had a really good one this year. Hunter Ace had a really good one this year. You know, they want you to get that name recognition. They want you to get excited about the players and to see them progress week over week. So I think that this is probably a better implement implementation of the tour style. Um, so in terms of currently invited players, for Europe, we've got Seiko, Boar Control, Fino, Casey, Clento, Tice, Bunny Hopper, RDU, Hunter Ace, Orange, Boston, Yarla, Pavel, Silver Name, Swids, and whoever does the best out of the current HCT system. Could be our, our world champion basically from this year will be guaranteed to be in the Grandmasters format, whatever region he happens to come from. Um, for Americas, we've got Just Saying Muzzy. Amnesiac, Frozen Delay, Purple Dog, Firebat, Bloody Face, PNC, Nalguidan, which I'm very, very glad that there's some South America representation, as well as Monsanto and Seyun. So we've got pretty much like all the people checking the boxes of if I was going to invite people, these are probably, for the most part, would be on my list. Um, and like I said, there's the spot for whoever does best in the region in the upcoming HCT championships. So it's, I think, going to be a really, really good tournament, but, uh, or I guess, league? <laughs> Tournament's yeah, league. the wrong name for it. Uh, it's but league, league. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's going to be really interesting. So all of this to say, we know that Roger and Real are not going to be invited to Grandmasters, at least for the first year. So, so they're going to have to earn their spot in the second have to, year. Yeah, they're going to have to earn their spot in the second year. So they're still allowed to compete in the Hearthstone Masters qualifiers and the Hearthstone Masters Tour. <laughs> I think I got those names right. Uh, but the, the bottom two levels of, of competition, they're still allowed to compete, which I find kind of odd because let's say Roger goes all through the qualifiers, makes it to Vegas, wins Vegas. Then somewhere along the line, he's bumped somebody out who maybe could have had a chance at grandmasters and then it just okay now he doesn't so whoever came second is the one that gets bumped to grandmasters i don't know it just it seems weird to me that to well, have somebody I, I, yeah i'll play devil's advocate on it though all the way up if they ban them from that they're essentially two year banning them instead of one year banning them because then they wouldn't even be able to qualify for year two of the grandmasters format which would mean they'd have to then start a year later to then try to qualify for year three of the grandmaster. So it's, I think this is the reasoning is it's a one year ban that if they banned them from all competition, it would essentially become a two year ban. Yeah. And that's probably the reasoning why they're still allowing them to compete in this other stuff to essentially give them a shot to once the one year ban is, is concluded. If they have earned their spot back in, yeah. they are back in. 
And so, so I think now that the- we, yeah, I think that what we're probably going to see is I would say probably something similar to what the, this year's HTT system has done, where we've had a seasonal championship with, you know, a top four that then goes on to our full HTT yearly championship. We're probably going to see something like that. I would say like the people who go to Vegas, maybe our top four will compete in a final tournament for spots in these grandmaster um leagues in the grandmaster league <laughs> it's new it's leaked give me give me a minute guys I'll, I'll get the terminology down eventually but um yeah the i think the three tournaments that we have probably take a few from the top of those tournaments over the next couple of months and then or i guess over the next year and then they'll compete in one final tournament and the prize instead of being money or probably still with some money tied to it will be the the two spots for each region which equals money yeah which equals money, yeah. And we, and we, and it's good to remind everyone that there's also already been two hundred fifty thousand dollars announced as a the prize pool for the first of three Masters Tour stops in Vegas. Yeah, the, the Masters Tours have the two hundred fifty thousand dollar prize pool. Right, right. So it's not like this five hundred thousand that's locked behind the Grand Masters wall is the only prize money that's out there for Hearthstone events. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I'm that's excited good. for this. I think it's, I think it's yeah. Really overall, uh, I, I think this is. Uh, a, a, like a big positive step forward. Um, it's still probably more games than I have interest in watching. Um, and I definitely want more movement in and out of grand masters. Uh, I hope I sure as sure as hell hope they don't stick to only two people a year going forward, but yeah, that's rough. But you know, like, like I, we have to at least acknowledge like this is, this is a more like you can enjoy it in bite sized chunks but there will always be Hearthstone to watch if you want to. And I think that's one of the issues that we had for a long time is like, you felt like you had to watch it all or you just, and then you felt fatigued by it. It's like, I'm just going to be able to pick and choose my Hearthstone viewing and just follow the players. I like know that they're always going to be there. That's exciting for me. Like when Amnesiac's on, I'm going to want to watch that. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's a good point. You know, um, and I've been getting back into like esports watching habits because of my rekindled obsession with, with, with Korean Starcraft two. Um, and that esport just doesn't happen at a time I can watch and sure. stay a sane, <laughs> yeah, healthy really human being. Like so out. yeah, I consume it completely via VODs and I just skip games. I don't like, I don't like Protoss versus Protoss. It's not a matchup that interests me. So I tend to skip it unless someone's like, dude, you have to see this game. It's bananas. And then I pull it up. Um, so, you know, I'm, as long as there's hopefully a well organized VOD system for this, I'm a happy man. No, I'm sure. Yeah. It, it, yeah. This is a, uh, this is just like such a massive and the specialist format too. It's going to make everything a lot more consumable well, yeah, without best fatigue. Of threes, right? Without, yeah. Best of threes instead of best of fives. You're going to see matchup versus matchup. We just hope that it's not just hunter versus hunter all the time, but I think, you know, this rotation will probably make that not the, the case. So yeah, there's some really good fan resources out there right now that are keeping watch on the qualifiers for Vegas. And it is far and away hunter 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 yeah turns out master's call is good <laughs> <laughs> yep yes it is well anyway again all this is rumor but it sure yep. seems like a believable except one except the roger man <laughs> except the roger yeah, yeah that's not a rumor uh that definitely happened just later than i would have expected something like that to come down yeah i mean a whole Roger conversation that we had after he won was like, well, you know, Blizzard clearly has already looked into this and decided that whatever he did, you know, we should cut him a break because they decided he wasn't cheating. No, they just waited literally a year to figure out that he was yeah, insane. Yeah, we, we should have, <laughs> our, our entire like 20 minute conversation should have just been us going, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they're just real <laughs> Well, yeah, but we got to also point out that the guy who didn't ban him for a year is no longer the head of esports there. And so I think we have to give credit to whoever came in to say, yeah, yeah well, no, we took action mistake, here, right? Yeah. yeah, it was, there's been turnover and change there. Uh, so this might just be a super positive thing to happen, right? That it's like, oh, look at this. The new leadership is is taking steps that maybe should have been taken in the first place, you know? Yeah. Um, that probably bodes well going forward. That that's people a, will yeah, not that's cheat really because they will get it. punished. Yeah. 
Uh, anyways, links to all of these leaks uh, over at Inven Global and whatnot in the show notes available at amove.tv slash TAC. Look for the episode 307 post. They're always linked at the very bottom of the most recent episode's blog post. It's a Google Doc. Sometimes it don't work on your phone. Uh, open it on a desktop, please. <laughs> Uh, anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We hope you all enjoyed. We'll be back next week for episode 308. I think we're going to have uh, quite a few more cards to discuss by then. But <laughs> until then, uh, we want to thank those of you supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. Uh, if somehow you're completely unfamiliar with it, it is an opt-in subscription for this podcast. So if you get some value from our show, you'd like to give us some value in return, whether you're given a dollar an episode or $10 an episode, uh, we really appreciate it. And every little bit really does help. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash TAC. And also a huge thanks to our producers, Declan H and Sean C. Thank you for the support. You too. Uh, other than that, everything's at emove.tv for this podcast, the whole back catalog. You want to go back to episode one and listen to us be very wrong about the game. Actually, I think we were right because it was beta and we were just saying play rogue because it was busted. <laughs> so we were we were right even back then. But you can go listen to it and uh, see the sweet summer children that we were. Uh, or just catch up on the last few episodes. If you want to hear about the, uh, you know, the $250,000 prize pool for the tour stop, I believe that was episode 303. So if you missed that and all the things about the Hearthstone's, Hearthstone Masters qualifiers, go check it out. But before we leave, Dills, where can everybody find you? I uh, Check me out on Twitter at Willie Dills and Twitch. <laughs> That TV slash house. Yeah, I was like, I was like concerned that I was still <laughs> muted for some reason. So I kind of oh. like, uh, yeah. And then uh, twitch.tv slash Willie Dills is where you can find me streaming the Hearthstone. Uh, I've kind of locked in a schedule now. So hopefully soon there will actually be a posted and followed schedule for my Twitch streaming, which I know has been sporadic to say the least based on the other jobs that I do. So. Uh, we're looking good for maybe locking things down and just knowing when I'll be on. So check me out there. Give me a follow. Rad. Jocelyn, what about yourself? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays, and you can always go check out the Gamers in on Thursdays. Go check it out. And I just realized I'm like, I think I know another reason I'm still struggling with your last name is because it may be involved in the email address I have for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not changing my email. I don't know. It just like, popped <laughs> in the head. That'd be crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Katie hasn't changed hers either. But uh, anyways, folks, I'm Garrett Art on Twitter. Two R's and two T's. And Garrett, I trust you know how to spell art. Uh, all the podcasts I do are to aimove.tv. There's Into the Nexus for Heroes of the Storm. There's uh, Enter the Apex for Apex Legends. There's my solo show, R2T2. Uh, go subscribe to all of them. Check them out. I appreciate the support, everyone. But that's going to wrap it up for episode 307 of The Angry Chicken. Until next time, job's done. Job's done. Job's done. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>